Welcome to Mumbling with Matt, episode maybe three. I don't, it depends on when this gets edited. Well, whatever episode this is going to be, it's going to be about everyone's favorite ugly motherfuckers, the Predators. And with me today, we have two very special and very foreign guests who over the years have given me endless amounts of material to steal. One J Hunter and one V1 slash Steve from OSW Reviews. How's it going, lads? Hello! And welcome to Mumbling with Matt. And I'm not the host, <laughs> you are, Matt. <laughs> What's the story, Matt? Uh, pretty good. It, you know, when you're dealing with people from, you know, Ireland, Scotland, the UK, like, I just feel like I'm one of the McMahons where I have to start talking like them. Like, I have to start talking about chippers and the state of it. Like, when I'm over there for, like, a fucking uh, pay-per-view, I have to just start talking like them. And and just like you guys say, it's like, you already know this stuff. Why do I have to talk about chippers? <laughs> and I don't even know what a chipper is. I forget that most people aren't in Ireland and in their 30s to get our references. I I kind of assume that with the show. Eh, you know what it is. Yeah, you know, and you know, sure, you know, and if they don't, you know, Google it. <laughs> Fuck them. Google yeah. Mr. Chippy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck them. Um, and uh, this came about uh, because I, I think, Jay, you said offhandedly to me, it's like, yeah, Predator, it's like my favorite film of like all time, or it's like up there. And I'm like, really? Because uh, with The Predator coming out very, very soon, uh, or, or it had just come out, uh, I was like, I really want to, I really want to talk to someone about this franchise in general. And uh, that's what we're doing today. So I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well looking forward to this. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, what's the matter, Matt? The CIA got to put pushing too, too many, many pencils. pencils. <laughs> the, wow, that was horrific. Wow, that's even... But that's what makes <laughs> it great. Already, yeah, yeah. I tried again in half an hour. But that's what I expected. That's like Schwarzenegger, like Schwarzenegger is a different language. It's not really English. It's not really Austrian. It's just... Arnold, you know? Yeah. 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 Love him. You can't oh. take the film too seriously whenever he's trying to talk because he can barely enunciate as well. He's awesome. He's the best. I love Ernie. He's my favorite actor of all time ever. Of all time. Uh wait, yeah, my, mine too, actually. Never mind. Uh, I was like, who else? I'm like, no, maybe 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 Arnold, because it's like he's just like this childhood hero, basically. Like it's it uh, I think we're all around the same age uh bracket. Uh, demograph. So, um, yeah, like all of his major films, like all hit me around the same time. Like I, I was too young for Terminator one, but like I rented Predator one, like as a kid, like for a sleepover, like I had a bunch of yes. friends over. Holy and shit. I got, yeah. Your parents would never let a kid do that nowadays. <laughs> no, because they walk in and they see Max shooting a, mach- a minigun. They're like, no, <laughs> and they just turn off the VCR, you know? Oh. It was acceptable in the 80s. It was acceptable at the time. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, specifically 87. I feel like 87 is an awesome year in general. Lots of great video games released, like Metal Gear, Final Fantasy 1, stuff like that. Like 87, like super good for media in general. To, to, to get all of these, we're going to go through the first three films, and then we're going to uh, finish up with the main event that is The Predator, which is the fourth film in the franchise. And that's like a whole lot of sweaty men in the jungle and even a whole lot of sweatier men in foam rubber predator suits. (laughs) So uh, we're going to have to do a brisk jog through a jaunt, a jaunt uh, through the first three movies instead of like a leisurely stroll. So I hope people at home don't mind that. But, you know, these movies like they're available on everything. You can get them like physically. They're all on YouTube. Like you can just buy them for like rent them for like a dollar on YouTube, like very accessible. I'm, I'm glad The Predator is not some weird franchise where there's like one or two that are just like, you can't find them anywhere. Like Predator 2 is only on a VHS from China or something like that. I I remember... Um, Imagine some Chinese blog doing Arnold Schwarzenegger's lines though. <laughs> <laughs> I want that, Jay. 
Let me have it. No, stay away from racism. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Impression averted. Now, now before before we start proper, I was thinking that sometimes, you know, movies are cut differently when they're released. Like there's different edits when they're released overseas. So if you guys happen to have any Irish exclusive scenes in the versions <laughs> in the versions you watch, <sighs> just chime in and let me know if there's any if there's any Coliseum video exclusives. <laughs> Predator eating his breakfast roll. <laughs> Or like Lord Al is just in front of Arnold, just getting him an interview after oh, after they that. fight the Predator the first time. I'm just mudding myself. I was like, oh, can I stay and watch? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> or Lord Al starts shooting guns with them in the jungle at nothing. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, book it. So Predator was released in 1987 and had an all-star cast of beefcakes like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, and Jesse Ventura, and it's about a team of commandos being dropped in Central America on a rescue mission to find themselves not only being the hunters, but maybe the hunted. It was written by a brother duo, Jim and John Thomas, and this marked their very first screenplay, like ever. These guys had written nothing up to this point, which is, like, amazing to me. Like, that's your first one. Predator. Like, that's amazing. And they were so new to the business that they had no idea how to properly submit it to a studio. But they did know of Joel Silver, who is, uh, or was, the legendary 80s and 90s producer of such films that maybe you guys know. Lethal Weapon, the entire Lethal Weapon series, Die Hard, 48 Hours, Commando, oh. Demolition Man. What's your buggle? Yeah. <laughs> the Matrix franchise. And on top and on top of it all, Macaulay Culkin's Richie Rich. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Somewhere OOC marks out. <laughs> the incredible Kalk. Oh my didn't he do Batman and Robin as well? Joel Silver. Ah oh, no, That's it's Schumacher. Schumacher. Ah fuck. All right, cut. Yeah, it's another Joel. They all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. Uh, these the, This writing duo, these brothers, just Metal Gear solid their way into the 20th Century Fox offices, just somehow got in, and they left the script at the door of Mr. Silver's office and then ran off. Nice. That's pretty great. And it worked. <laughs> He found the script and he loved it and he just got on the phone uh, with them and then the film was fast-tracked uh, to begin filming in Mexico. Uh, and when the Austrian Oak, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like that's such a good wrestling name, the Austrian Oak. Like that, that's that's money. Uh, he read the script. He flipped, he flipped out over it because – he, he really liked it because it wasn't just about him. Like, Commando was only, like, two years beforehand. And he was like, like oh, this is really interesting. This features, a, like, a really competent team of soldiers. And they all brought something to the table. So it wasn't just, like, an Arnold vehicle, like, for the most part. And it harkened back to such films that Arnold really liked, like The Dirty Dozen or The Magnificent Seven. So he was on board. And along with Apollo Creed and Captain Freedom... The cast oh. also, <laughs> like, think about that. You have Apollo Creed, Captain Freedom, and Commando. What a fucking faction. <laughs> yeah, what a staple. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. Can you imagine if the Predator was played by Hulk Hogan? <laughs> He's like, I'm going over. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to bump around me. <laughs> Arnold wins, but the Predator stays in the jungle and just starts hot-dogging. Yeah. Just doesn't die. Um, the cast also includes Bill Duke as Mac, Richard Chavez as Poncho, Sonny Landham as Billy, and one Shane Black as a young Hawkins. And one more notable and incredibly non-credited role is Jean-Claude Van Damme, who spent several weeks running around in a bright red chicken suit as he was <laughs> originally cast to play the predator amazing did you were you guys were you guys aware of this beforehand i heard like he didn't know that 
uh, he was going to be photoshopped <laughs> off later. So he just thought the alien was a big red chicken. And he was like, this is going to be shit. This is shit. <laughs> and he uh, bolted. But like, imagine trying to do that kind of special effects in the 80s. Like Photoshop this big red penis out, like you know? like because you're in uncharted territory. Like who else is doing this? Like how do you go about it? Like what we're just supposed to look at this red chicken suit? What do we do? And they're like, <laughs> I don't know. What do we do? I just can't um, think of some some like genius out there said. I know. <laughs> Let's pay Jean Claude Van Damme a shit ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> to not have his face in our movie. <laughs> Genius. I think at that point, he would he didn't have that many uh, movies to his credit because they'd be filming this in like 86. Like the first like Van Damme movie I can think of that like was like really notable was either like Bloodsport or uh, Cyborg, if you guys are familiar with that one. But it's like... Cyborg. Yeah. When was Hard Target? No, Hard Target's like... 96. 90s. 90s, yeah, okay. Yeah. But Blood Sports, what, 88 or something? Yeah. Something like that? So maybe maybe he wasn't that big of a deal yet. Um, I'd have to look at like when his movies actually came out, but uh, when he's wearing this red chicken suit, apparently he started moaning and bitching a lot, and then realized, it's like, no one's going to see my face, and it was really gross inside the suit, because the original script called for the Predator to be a more nimble and like graceful type creature and like uh van damme had like a martial arts and dancing background well yeah everyone knows he like loves to dance which uh which is why he was hired in the first place because eventually the producers had enough of his moaning and his behavior because apparently on set he wouldn't stop doing roundhouse kicks oh my god he's petty hard i was gonna say jimmy bennett (laughs) (laughs) while in the suit though Jesus. And they're like, the like he doesn't kick. The Predator doesn't do roundhouse kicks, and he wouldn't stop. So they fired him. A good call. Good call. The, there's also a really fascinating article that um, I'll link into the description that that really has a lot to do with the Van Dambockle, as I like to call it, where everyone on set has a different story about why Van Dam was fired. And the, the article is called Guns and Butter, an oral history of Predator. It's it's really fascinating because they talked a bit, uh, pretty much everyone that had something to do with the movie, like most of the cast, most of the production crew, the producers, and they all give different reasons why why Van Damme was fired. It's amazing. So with their original red chicken Predator suit being a pain in the ass to work with, and when Van Damme fired, the movie was actually shut down for a number of months while another suit was drafted up and they needed to find another actor to wear it. So Arnold kindly suggested that they contact Stan Winston Studios because they made the original uh, Terminator endoskeleton from Terminator 1. And they were fresh off doing Aliens, so they were the go-to guys for the creature effects. And have you guys heard of of what James Cameron has to do with the Predator? Oh, do tell. No. So they're on a plane ride to Japan, both James Cameron and Stan Winston. And Stan and they're friends, right? So they're they're joshing around and Stan Winston's doodling up possible head designs for the Predator. And lazily, Cameron looks over at his paper and just says, How about you do like insect mandibles? Like for like you don't see that very often. And then just sips his coke. And then Stan, Stan, not wanting to let his friend James know that how great this idea was and goes, oh, that's shit. That's shit. And then furiously starts like, like, <laughs> like designing it. And then history was made. Like James Cameron just farts out an idea. And then it becomes another iconic movie, movie monster. Like that, I, I, I heard of this only a couple of years ago. Like did not know about this. I, I, it's 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 in some, I want to say art book or another article. I, I don't exactly know where, but I just blew my mind. Like you created the Terminator and you farted out the Predator. Basically, it's amazing. It's fucking amazing. A guy had his working boots on back in the eighties, <laughs> didn't he? No, yeah, shit and gold. Yeah, but he wasn't. He didn't even have his working boots on. He's like relaxing in a plane, drinking oh, a coke. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. 
And so with this design in place, they found a um, the late Kevin Peter Hall, who plays the Predator in Predator, and he also appears as the rescue pilot at the end of the movie that picks up Arnold, because they really wanted him to have like have his face on screen, because he you know did such a great job as the Predator. You know, once they resumed filming, it was a tough shoot, but with all the sweat, blood, and tears they had done up to this point. The, you know, the movie, when it came out, it didn't really, really, like, set the world on fire in terms of box office or, like, critical acclaim, but it very, very quickly. Usually it takes, like, a decade or so to get cult status, but I feel that like The Predator got cult status very fast. Like, you started hearing about this movie, like, in, in the 90s all the time. Like, it was just, like, Predator, Predator, Predator. It's not one of those things that took a while for people to latch on to, but what do you guys... Like, what was your first, like, example of, like, seeing the movie or hearing about it? Ooh, uh, I'm pretty sure that my uh, dad would have, like, sat... Yes. Uh, sat A learned man. ...me down, <laughs> uh, because my dad loves Arnie. Like, T2 is his absolute favorite movie of all Good time. Man. He's watched and it, like, 8,000 times. And, and so he drilled uh, us, uh, you know, as kids with, like, Arnie, like, Commando and terminator and red sonya and conan and all of these and uh yeah so he would have uh sat us down and said Stephen john this is predator i know you're only children but uh <laughs> in enjoy lads so yeah you know like we probably would have seen it when we were very young that's awesome it's, it's kind of same with wrestling with myself like my I've got four older brothers and who would have been into this kind of stuff. And I remember Greg loved this film and he was actually bang on the money about this one. Not so, He also loved Predator 2 though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be trusted. Yeah, but he would have, I would have watched this when I was when 87, so it would have been four. So I'm sure I was at least six or seven at the time. It was fucking great. Though. Yeah, yeah. Are your memories, like, I'm not sure if this holds true to a lot of people. When I first saw it, and I must have been, like, maybe, maybe, I don't know, nine, I was scared shitless. I, I, it was actually really frightening to me. And specifically when, when, you know, like, spoilers for a 1987 movie, but where Mac, where Mac gets killed is the scariest. When it zooms in on Mac's face and you hear, like, any time. I was like, oh, I I hid, <laughs> I, I I I put I like hid my eyes. I don't know why. It it just it just made me really scared. And that was like my my most like prominent memory of Predator. Like there's other little bits in there, but I think back as a kid, I'm like, oh, that was really scary. And it was only until like I don't know, I was like later in my teenage years, like 15 or 16. I'm like, yeah, Predator, Predator, and specifically the Capcom arcade game. Predator. Oh, oh, yeah. That that's but that like I'm always confused about that game where it's like you actually have Arnold Schwarzenegger's like descendant, like his name is Schaefer, like Dutch Schaefer, and I think he's like in the future and he has a cyborg arm and that like that game and it never came out on the SNES and never came out on Genesis and I'm like oh I can only play this like on weird emulators and I don't understand them but um. I, I seen it in the arcade once or twice and it was like this legendary game and that's that's what made me like reignite like oh man yeah Predator's this really awesome thing and when you know the advent of DVD came along I'm like gotta buy Predator and when Blu-ray came along gotta buy Predator yes. <laughs> and when and totally. now with 4K gotta buy Predator <laughs> <laughs> isn't it like that's actually weird like you know there are certain movies that I have no problem buying six or seven times, you know, on tape, DVD, Blu-ray, digital. Betamax. Uh, <laughs> Betamax. Laser you know, disc. Just give it to me and take my fucking money because I, because I love it and I want to give my money for this product over and over again. Any excuse to watch it again. Yeah, totally, totally. And, you know, and make other people watch it. You know, yeah. When when you meet a group of like a new friend or whatever, or you like find something shocking about old friends, like yeah, I've never seen Predator. What? <laughs> and you immediately sit them in front of it. I did that same thing like a few weeks ago. A good friend of mine, she's like, I yeah, no, I I I hear Predator's good, 
And I'm like, well, I've got the 4K box set right here. And they're like, no, I have something to do right now. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you know. Um, but is there any specific – because we don't want to like go through too much of like the scene-by-scene scene things because we'd be here forever. Is there any particular like who's your favorite – character like is there do you have a favorite scene or anything like oh, that uh, you know schwarzenegger is the main event but uh jesse ventura blaine holy shit my favorite trivia about predator is that the director went up to, what's his name uh john mcturner went up to jesse ventura and he was like okay you're from a wrestling background but you're acting here reel it in mate and he's like okay okay i'll read it in. and what we see on the screen is him reeling it <laughs> in Real. bunch of slack jawed gets around here this stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus just like me that's him at a six. Oh, i love it uh yeah he was great um i always loved uh billy i just thought that there was something something really fucking cool uh you know like about him uh getting what's going on putting over how dangerous this is and you know even though we are the the basic like number one crack team here to like you know um to like kill all these uh guys in rescue. a jungle they're baby faces they're <laughs> yeah, they're baby fa- yeah. yeah but they're killing heels so yes. you know that makes them baby faces uh yeah i i just thought that the movie always put him over really well so uh i think mm-hmm. he's an awesome character I love that he had to hire a bodyguard for himself. Yeah. Because whenever he gets boozed up, he starts fights. <laughs> so they couldn't <sighs> trust him and leave him alone. I love it. Fucking Nighthawk. I yeah. was like, you're going to pick a fight with Schwarzenegger and Ventura, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's a big jack dude. And in any other movie, he'd be the biggest cat around. Not in Predator. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. just some twink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the things that like happens in a lot of short scene movies, specifically Commando, is that everyone's like, oh, you're a big ripped guy. You're a bodybuilder. So in Commando, for example, it just says like, uh, you know, getting away from Predator for one second is when John Matrix holds up the gigantic cut piece of like lumber. That's like a tree. They have a real tree on set and they're like, well, pick it up. And he's like, I can't pick it up. That's stupid. That's so heavy. <laughs> and they're like, what, what do you mean? He's like, that's that weighs like 500 pounds. I get you crazy. I need like a, I need like a prop tree. And they're like, but you're you're strong though. And he's like, you're stupid. <laughs> oh my he gave god. Gave me a shoot tree. I need a work tree. And this follows him throughout his career. Like anyone that's new that works with him, they're like, pick this up. And he's like, no, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Who do they think he is? Like They think he's Superman. Cause as a kid, you think he's Superman too, you know? Oh, absolutely. But you know, these are adults working <laughs> on the movie set. <laughs> But they analyze him too. Like, yeah, specifically true. like an undercard guy for me. I like how you all have two different dudes here. I really like Poncho. There's something about Poncho where he's like, he's kind of in the background. He has a few good lines, but not too many. Uh, he's an interpreter for uh, Anna, the girl that they find uh, midway through the movie. And there's something about him where I really like. I like how his gimmick weapon is like a grenade launcher. Like, that's his weapon. Everyone kind of... Well, Billy and Poncho... Uh, Billy, sorry. Billy and Hawkins just kind of don't have their own weapon, I guess. They just have like a like an MP5 or something. But like, I like how some characters have like their, their, their thing. Like, oh, I have the grenades. And Mac is really good with traps and uh, claymores and stuff. And that's like a really, that's probably one of the things that Schwarzenegger really liked about the script. Like every character, even if they're not giving a whole lot about their backstory, they have little things about them. Like Blaine's wearing an MTV shirt, which I always found hilarious. Like the last person that would watch MTV (laughs) is Jesse Ventura. (laughs) It's out of honor of my Cindy Lauper shirt. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, Shane Black, who was the writer of, Every Lethal Weapon movie was, I'm sure maybe Jay knows this, but he was like pressured by the producers and the director to do some rewrites on the script. And at first he was like, nah, no thanks. 
And then when they offered him an actual role in the film, he's like, yeah, fine. And their idea was when he's not filming, he has nothing to do in the jungles of Mexico. So here's the script. You have not, there's no cell phones. So you have nothing to do but rewrite the script. Genius. Yeah, that's clever. I like it. Sneaky. The cerebral assassin over <laughs> here. Like he's, he's, he's just, how do we get this guy? And at this time, Shane Black was like red hot. Like he had just finished the script for like Lethal Weapon 1 and he was red hot in Hollywood. And they're like, he'll write for free because he's here just to act. We'll pay him to act. But it's like he'll, he'll have nothing to do and he'll get bored. And for a long time, I was like, oh, yeah, Shane Black spiced up the script a lot. But uh, he himself said, like, I actually did almost nothing. The only thing I did was the second my girlfriend's pussy joke. Oh, wow. That's the only thing he added. And it's funny because that's like, I don't, like, like between the two pussy jokes, which one is your favorite? said, you know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too. Mine's as big as a house. The other day, I was going down to my girlfriend. I said to her, geez, you got a big pussy. Geez, you got a big pussy. She said, why did you say that twice? And I said, I didn't. See, it's because of the echo. Is it the first joke or is it the second one that makes Billy laugh? Uh, it's the second joke. Yeah. That, that's the only acceptable answer. So that was a trick question. Ah, <laughs> sneaky. Jay? Sneaky. Like the Japanese. <laughs> they are little sneaky. <laughs> He's off. <clears throat> hey, uh, continue. Did you guys know that a monkey was the predator for a while? What? This sounds like something Carl Pilkington should have uh, gotten. <laughs> so give us this monkey news. <laughs> so for movement references... When the predator leaps from tree to tree, there was an attempt to put a small monkey in a red mocap suit, like like the one like like Jean Claude Van Damme would wear, Holy and shit. they would have the monkey swing around. the The footage was deemed unusable, and the monkey did not like to wear the suit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It probably Christ. would have worked out to be about as well as like Shia LaBeouf in Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. It was just with the moment in the film where it just turns to shit. <laughs> yeah. So so there's that. I only I only learned about that recently because like for example, the the Blu-ray of Predator, I think uh, definitely the 4K version as well. They have a really really great documentary that I like I highly suggest cuz you know when DVD kind of like was in his main heyday, I would watch all the all the documentaries, like all the Lord of the Rings documentaries that were longer than the movie itself. I'd watch all of them. I was fascinated by them. And the one for Predator is actually really good because they have a mix of talking to actors today or when they recorded the DVD commentary and they talk to the actors when they were young, when they when they did the actual film. And it's really fascinating. They they say a lot of stories. And I think they briefly mention Jean-Claude Van Damme, but they never mention the monkey. And I'm like, why wouldn't you mention the monkey? That's so good. He works for scale. <laughs> works for bananas. Like, <laughs> there's that. And that's like one of the main things that I'm just like, I, I learn something new about Predator like every couple of years, either something about the production or something when you watch it. Like you'll, you'll watch it again. You'll be like, huh, I never, I never realized like that's what, that's why that character does that thing. For the longest time, I had no idea what Max says when he sees the predator towards the end of the film and he runs off. Like, like, are you guys aware of what Mac is saying over and over and over again? I know. I go, go ahead. Yeah. I haven't a clue. Like sandbag. Jeez. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Tell us, man. I'm going to have me some fun. Going to have me some fun. Going to have me some... He's reciting the lyrics of the song that was playing... Oh, Black Betty. Yeah. When when they're yes. in the uh, helicopter. Yeah. And he's just... He's, he's reciting that over and over to him. And I only realized that a few years ago when I was watching. I'm like... I, and as a kid, I was like, what the hell is he saying? I don't know. He's crazy. And it's only later where I'm like, oh, he's singing Long Tall Sally. 
She's built sweet. And then I'm going to have me some fun. Going to have me some fun. And I'm like, that's so good. It's it's one of those things that makes Predator, like, a, like it elevates it a little bit above, like, you know, a sci-fi action movie. Because like your typical brainless action movie. Yeah, totally. Like, uh, this is one of the smartest dumb movies ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a lovely backhanded comment. <laughs> <laughs> And even even uh, John McTiernan, who this like John McTiernan, this is his first directorial debut. By the way, I always thought that in my head he made Die Hard first, and then made Predator second. But I'm like, no, Die Hard came later. So after the success of this, then he did Die Hard. Then he did like a bevy, of, and they, they just picked and choose what he directed after that point. I'm like, man, that's that's like. For this being the first script of two writers, and this being the first director, like major Hollywood directing, like Predator is a miracle, really. Like why it's so good and like still holds up to this day, you know? Ah, oh, they knocked it out of the fucking park, man. When you see the mm. deleted scenes, what they it's just mostly the Boy Scout bullshit, and there's no audio to it. It's all really scratched video, and it looks horrific. Like this film is kind of Benny Hill territory. You <laughs> it know? looks like Samurai Cop. Oh shit, oh, man! God. And so I'm just thinking this film was shaped. Obviously, um, it was scripted quite tightly, but however, it was edited, and the finished product is holy shit. Because what they would have been given in the dailies and all the footage, it could have been absolute garbage with a monkey <laughs> in a red suit. <laughs> monkey. I want it. I want to see that footage. <sighs> uh, a reason why it was so tight, though, is because I mentioned before when they like threw away the shit suit from the first Predator, uh, like the first Predator design, they had like three months and John McTiernan was able to look at what they shot already and they edited that first. And then when they resumed filming, they were like, oh, now I know what else I need. Ah. It's like, like pickups and stuff. Like when I, like going back to Lord of the Rings again, going back to Welcome to the, the Hobbits to Isengard, <laughs> the, they, when, you know, famously for Lord of the Rings, they would have so much time in between shoots that they would see what they had, edit it down. They're like, okay, now we have a bunch of pickups because we're going to start filming the next movie or the next scene from the next movie, whatever, we have time to film pickups so we know what we need uh, to fill in the gaps or anything that doesn't make sense or stuff that we cut and whatever. And it was just a really advantageous thing for them to like have their production basically shut down for three months. And maybe like, well, in the meantime, we can still work on it. Like it's a Schwarzenegger movie. They're not going to just cancel it, even though that we stopped filming. So it's actually one of the reasons why I think like Predator is is as good as it is, because they were just given that extra editing time, which a lot of movies don't have. They need to like rush to make their release date and stuff. So it's it's one of the more fascinating bits about it that I only, again, I only realized until much much later. So. So the Predators are really fucking salty when they lose. <laughs> like, I've never seen a race be like, you didn't win. You didn't win. And just beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. And then you're like, no, that's not fair. That's my absolute least favorite part of this fucking movie. It's weird because like when he gets up in Schwarzenegger's grill for the first time, he picks him up and he's like, eh, because he didn't think it was a fair fight. But let's yeah. go hand to hand combat because he's all about honor and 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 the, the the like hunt and winning and the best wins and the toughest wins. But then when he loses, he's like, fuck you, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, come on, dude. Predator wants to get his heat back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he is Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and his entire race is Hulk Hogan because they all do it. Like in video games and comics, they all are like, nah, nah, man. Nah, brother, brother. Like every time. <laughs> That, that basically sums up, like, the, the ending, you know? It's, it's almost as if I don't want... If anyone that's listening to this doesn't hasn't actually seen Predator, like, please do. Don't want to give away too much in, like, sequential, so you, like, know whatever, where every scene goes. But the ending of the movie is actually really weird because it's Arnold looking very melancholy. 
Like, he's covered in ash. He's just been picked up in a helicopter after the Predator got really salty. And I think it was, like, John McTiernan himself who was like, man, this is a really downer of a film. So when that scene fades out and Schwarzenegger is just being, like, choppered. Choppered. Exactly. I love how Schwarzenegger owns that now. Like, he's like, oh, this is a meme. Everyone loves it. I'm, I'm going to say it whenever I can. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! Like, he just loves saying, get to the chopper. <laughs> they have that cast role that shows every character and has their name. It's very 80s sitcom. Isn't yeah. It? it is, but it's like... Even as a kid, it struck me as tonally odd, but John McTiernan felt like this is such a downer of a movie. Let us see the characters, uh, like, you know, as jovial as they could be. But I I don't like stay with me on this. There's only a few survivors left. There's there's Schwarzenegger. There's uh, Anna. And they lost a long they lost a lot of friends along the way. But it's like when this music starts and it's kind of like da 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 da. And it shows everyone kind of smiling. It's like, you might as well play like, gotta live, laugh, <laughs> love, and survive. <laughs> how can we have that on cue? It's terrifying. <laughs> I love how it's like, I had to say gotta live. And that's it. That's all it took. Ooh. Even as a kid, I was like, this is so weird. Because it's like, these are scenes that weren't in the movie. Like it's. It's uh, Hawkins reading like a comic book and then Dylan like catching a gun that, that's thrown to him off screen by like a stage hand. And I'm like, what is this stuff? And they film that stuff separately because they're like, oh, this is such a downer. We got we got to make people feel good. But I'm like, all the characters are dead. <laughs> but but that's that's Predator in a nutshell, basically about like, you know, it's it's general spying through the movie. But in general, where where does this fit in the pantheon of movies uh, for both of you guys? That's a it's a tough question. Um, in terms of like eighties action movies, I think it's absolutely one of the best. Like, there's no like top ten, no doubt about it. I think this movie is fucking incredible. I I love it. It's one of my favorite action movies ever. Like. The only action movie off the top of my head that I'd say that I like more than this would be Terminator 2. Yeah, baby! <laughs> and, and maybe with Die Hard, you know, coming in third place. But yeah, so, so you know, you were like, you know, kind of... Your dad was right. <laughs> yes, he was. He was, <laughs> he was right all along. But so, so yeah, f- you know, for like me, it's one of the greatest action movies ever. It's one of Arnie's best movies movies absolutely it's and it's and like you said it's a cult classic but i think it's too good to be called that that's a good point it's it's it was good when it came out Mm -hmm. and people liked it and it's just people just liked it more yeah as the years went on and it was it gets like predator obviously for reasons that we don't even know to go into gets stacked up to alien a lot and aliens especially because it was released by the same uh movie studio um it features like an intergalactic like space monster and at least predator one has a lot of tension like there's long scenes where there's just no dialogue um and that's really weird for 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 like a movie of this time especially in the 80s and especially starring arnold schwarzenegger like schwarzenegger has a few almost weirdly placed one-liners like throws a knife into a guy's <laughs> stick, around. stick around like they felt like they needed to put that in because it's a short sneaker film but he stops that you know pretty pretty quick like he just stops saying those types of things and just has really good lines like it's it's actually one of the more subtle arnie performances i think because he works so well in the group like he's the leader of the bunch you know him well but at the same time, he doesn't like like overbear on the rest of the cast. Everyone gets a little bit of time to shine, and it's one of those things that makes it a unique Arnie movie in general, where he's not like the main like he is the main event, like Jane, like Jay said, but like he's also not at the same time like he's the main event in the final act. Yeah, but for most of the movie, he's just like a strong leader, 
And even then, I wouldn't even say, like, the leader per, per chance. He's just, like, the main character. And it's one of those things that I think gives the movie, like, a lot, a lot of long, like, uh, a lot of lasting appeal that maybe some other Schwarzenegger films don't have. Like, Commando is good fun, but it's, that, that is good fun. That's about it. It's not a great movie by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. Oh my god! Like I was just thinking about this film, about the Predator. It's a remarkably simple pitch. Highly trained extraction team are hunted in the jungle by by a superior alien, and that's it. But it's so much more than the sum of its parts. Like it's not perfect, but it is really. You know, uh, the charisma is off the charts, and like, oh, yeah. the testosterone <laughs> levels. Man, this film failed a wellness test. <laughs> <laughs> It is the number one coolest film of all time. Half of the dialogue in this film are one-liners, and they all stand up 30 years later. Um, I, sometimes I wonder, because um, we do a lot of all wrestling and stuff, if it's just nostalgia, the 80s weren't that great. Then you watch Predator. No, it fucking was. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's how I feel about this film. It's my third favourite film of all time. Um, second is Dark Knight, and the first is Terminator 2. So Arnie, onto a fucking winner, mate. Yeah. Nice, nice. Oh, one more thing. I love how this film is unashamedly straight homoeroticism. Because, like, <laughs> there's scenes where we just look at Arnie's muscles, you know? Like, he tells the crew, hold up, and he's just got his bicep out. Yeah. yeah. Or when he hides in the tree with the mud on him in the Jesus pose, you know, we're just having a gawk on him. And Vince McMahon would be going, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, I- and of course, you've got that one scene like, Dylan, you son, son of a bitch. bitch. Well, oh. And the two arms. Like, that is one of my favorite scenes in movies. I, I love it. It's it's so 80s. It's so cheesy. But it's it's perfect. It's I hard wouldn't change not it. to fucking go crazy and mark out. Yeah. Like, the movie hasn't even started yet. Like, there's no action. But that scene, just talking to Dylan, talking to, like, the, the general... That scene is is amazing, and like e- e- with the hand slap, it's 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 like monumental. Ugh. But just like the dialogue, the way Schwarzenegger looks at people and stuff. Speaking of homoeroticism, when they see the, <laughs> yeah, when they see the camp of uh, gorillas, that Schwarzenegger asks like, "Give me a um, give me a um, uh, uh, God. Uh, why, why can't I think of the name now?" Uh, what you see, what you use to see long distances, <laughs> binoculars, binoculars. My God, um, he crawls. He Metal Gear Solid fours <laughs> on the ground, and the camera goes right up his ass. You see this big Arnie butt, and and I can't look away. I it's 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 an eclipse. <laughs> it's <laughs> they knew Before they knew. <sighs> Terminator movies, no. They zoom in on his ass. <laughs> because that's what children of the 80s wanted, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tommy was so. He's like, oh, people need to see my ass. Oh, my God. So that is, that is Predator 1. It's it's like, I I don't have a, like a top 10 of movies, but I have a top 10 of movies. <laughs> I just don't know where they go. Yeah, I don't know which which is number one, and Predator is is in the top ten. I I just don't I just don't know where exactly. But what else is in there? In no particular order. Like Terminator Two is there. Uh, like uh, Terminator like One is there somewhere as well. It it never used to be, but once I'd seen it a couple more times, I was like, Yo, the, like Predator uh, Terminator One is really underrated. Like everyone's like Terminator Two, and it's not as good as Terminator Two. There's no way it could be, but I'm like with what they had to work with, the budget and everything. Like Terminator One is incredible. It's an amazing movie. Michael Bean, he's awesome. Yeah, big gorilla thumbs up. Aliens is there? Maybe it, it's a lot of the same shit. Honestly, <laughs> it's just it's a, in it's five Schwarzen- of these. <laughs> He's the greatest actor there's ever been, you know? Um, I don't know how you could be a male who grew up during this time and these not be in your list of favorite fucking movies because they're all winners. They all knock it out of the park. They're good times. They're yeah. good fun. And it's just a lot of beefy men. 
<laughs> which which we all love, you know, like just can't get away from it. Sadly, we have to move on to Predator 2. <laughs> It, it it came out in 1990, and even more sadly, it was originally intended to have Schwarzenegger come back and and be in the movie. Um, and Arnold wanted to do it, but production was ramping up for Terminator 2 at the time, so he had to pick between both projects, and I think, in retrospect, probably made the right choice. <laughs> the hair, hair is... Hair's breath between them. Yeah, and uh, 20th Century Fox didn't didn't want to wait for him to be available, uh, so they Why? just they just marks. <laughs> but, but like, I I think it's like, I I feel like back in the 80s, like sequels were released like very very fast. Like I, I don't know, but like because like there's you know diehards, lethal weapons, or whatever. I just feel like they were like, no, and no, gotta gotta hit while the iron's hot, and they just didn't want to wait. Until Schwarzenegger was available and just like, no, a Predator 2 now, so. Oh, that DVD bin is looking very empty, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Man, you know, like, you know, just for the sake of not waiting, you know, six months or a year, we'll just kill the franchise for 10 years, you know? Yeah, if if you want to read a sequel, there's an actual sequel in comic book form that takes place in New York City and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger's brother, who wants to get revenge on the Predator. Like, knows that the Predator was responsible for, like, killing his team. And there, there's a very early Dark Horse comic book run. And it's it's amazing. Oh. It's, it's kind of like a better version of Predator 2. Wow, that's quite a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> what bar? I was going to say, low so bar. you're telling me it's okay. <laughs> You know, John McTiernan at this point, like he had, he had made Die Hard, so he had his pick of projects. He declined. I don't want to return. But who's the next best candidate to direct this? Why the director of Nightmare on Elm Street Five, Five. of course, <laughs> which of course is the one that everyone thinks of <laughs> when they think of Freddy. Yeah. Just laser focus. Yeah, Elm Street Five, the Dream Child. Sure. Fuck me. So. One Stephen Hopkins, who I never heard of up until this point, he would never do much in Hollywood except for 1996's hottest lion-based horror movie, The Ghost in the Darkness, starring Michael Douglas and Val Kilmer. That movie is winner, though. I have never heard of that movie. It's a bunch of CG lions killing people in Africa, and Batman and Ant-Man have to defeat it. Holy shit. Whoa. But this is like 90s, so I'm sure it's just shit. It's 1996. It's peak 90s. It's amazing. Ooh. Bit of 2 um, Unlimited starts playing <laughs> during the fight scene. Like. So, so that's the director. Jim and John Thomas, uh, the writers of the first movie, Return to pen the script for Predator 2, and I think you can tell right away. Because while the movie has a lot of faults, it's it's its dialogue is not one of them. People speak in the same sort of way. People still are very one-liner e. And while Predator 2 is not nearly as good as Predator 1, there's still a lot of a lot of memorable not as many, but I still feel that the dialogue is not one of the movie's weaknesses. And uh, it it has the same style. And, like, there's even references to the first film. Like, early on, a crack is made about pushing pencils. When Danny Glover is, like, walking in the police station, he's like, oh, is this another push, uh, like, pencil pusher? And I'm like, they knew that line was money. (laughs) But, you know, but in a way, it also kind of cheapens this movie, you know, because you're... It does. You know, because you're verging into parody nearly you know terminator 3 that's, arnie puts on the sunglasses it's exactly what i have written down here i was like you know you have to be very careful when you're you know talking about your previous you know gimmicks and jokes and but like at the same time i'm like i appreciate one or two nods and predator 2 does a weird thing where it is still very different like it it has a lot of characters whereas like we had a very small cast of characters in the first movie and and we're smack dab in the middle 
of a heat wave in the futuristic time period of 1997. And that's word for word what I have written <laughs> in the far future of 97. <laughs> And Demolition Man does the same thing. Oh. Like Demolition Man came out in like 93 and it's like <laughs> in 1996 the world is at war. I'm like what the <laughs> It's 3 years away. Oh my god. And in Pred- Predator 2 came out in 1990 this is 7 years away and Los Angeles is apparently a war zone but <laughs> between King Willie's Jamaican voodoo posse and the Colombians. <laughs> Just a point to the people who wrote this movie. Uh, voodoo was not practiced in Jamaica. It's from Haiti. Oh, very yeah. good. that is like the least of their problems. I'm like, come on, lads. <laughs> 1990, Google this shit. <laughs> Ask Jeeves this shit. <laughs> Lycos. <laughs> Web crawl. <laughs> But the, you know the predator, he likes it hot and sticky. So if <laughs> if your city is hot, he's gonna be in town with a few days to kill. That that simple setup on the poster, Predator Two. That okay, I'll give you that. That's really good. I wish when that trailer came out, they had wrestling fans from today watching it, so we could get the reaction for it. Think of the heat, <laughs> just a uh, boo, <laughs> just, just straight, just throwing fucking popcorn and drinks at the screen. Yeah, <laughs> I like I I I like that line. That line's fine because it fits Predator Two. Because Predator Two is a lot more jokey. It takes itself a little less seriously. Not well, not like too much, but just enough. And it, it's because like I, I guess it's because Arnold wasn't able to do it, but. I don't know where they got in the script or if they even had a script. They just like, we know we want Arnold Schwarzenegger because he's so hot at the time. But Danny Glover, who like at this point is like, I, I want to say at Lethal Weapon 2. So he's still pretty hot. And he plays Mike Harrigan, a cop that plays by his own rules to win the <laughs> war on drugs by any means necessary. It's 80s as fuck. The most unique character yeah. they've ever penned. One week away from retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also paired up with his other friends on the force. Danny, Leona, and a new member of the crew, Jerry Lambert, played by Gusto with the late Bill Paxton. Nice. Side note... Bill Paxton was the fucking best. <laughs> the only actor to have been an alien, predator, and terminator. Whoa. That's, that's where's where's the um tire mark on his face? <laughs> fucking amazing <laughs> though. Fuck. Was that a tattoo or what the tire mark? He's in commando too! Fucking He's in commando as well. Sneaky bollocks. He's a guy that's on like you know when uh uh Schwarzenegger and the and his and the, the girl are like in a plane and they have to fly below the radar signal? Bill Paxton's at the controls of, of the uh, radar equipment. Fuck, He's like, wow. I don't know, I don't know where he went, sir. <laughs> Good impression. Yeah, uh, I pride myself on my Bill Paxton impression. Um Kevin Peter Hall, who played the Predator in the first movie, played the Predator again in Predator 2. And um, unfortunately, though, like a year later, he contracted HIV through a blood transfusion. Hmm. Like just just happened to get it because he also played the Sasquatch on Harry and the Hendersons. If you guys are familiar with that Sasquatch character. Yes. Wow. I didn't know that. Holy shit. Because he's seven feet tall. So who else is going to. And you can't teach that. <laughs> You you can't teach being tall, you know. It's true. Um, and 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 he died when he was like thirty five. Like that's it's like sucks, but <sighs> you know at, at least he got to play the predator one more time. Uh, and and here, Kevin Peter Hall plays a new predator, um, and he's known as the City Hunter, and he's uh I don't know about you guys, but he's a bit he's kind of a more of an asshole in this movie. <laughs> yes. How how do you feel about? the predator and predator two as a character. Like, cause I feel like he's kind of a, he's kind of a dick. He does more dickish things, gets way more salty, way more fast. It's like, yes. Uh, all of that, you were absolutely spot 
spot on. But then again, at the same time, when he's losing, he doesn't set off a nuke in the middle of a city. So, you know, eh, good and bad. <laughs> and the last member of, of the cast is one Peter Keyes, who is played by the toothy fever dream <laughs> that, is, that is Gary Busey. He sticks out. You know, you don't <laughs> not see Gary Busey. All I could just see is his mouth. Like it's just <laughs> uh, Do you like his uh, Matt Hardy power suit that's about eight <laughs> sizes oh. too big on him? <laughs> Swimming in it's, it. I think he got yeah. it from Tommy Wiseau. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, functionally, he plays a very similar role to Burke from Aliens, like, where he's like a, like, he's like a company man he know he like he's trying to get something, but what's neat about him is that he plays it completely differently. Where Burke was like, "Oh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, the company, you know." But but Peter Keys gets right in your fucking face yeah. after yeah. like like after like one meeting. He's like, "Get out, get out of here. You're not needed. Get I'm the FBI. Fuck you." And it, it's actually like something that Predator 2 needs. I, I was just thinking, if this character wasn't in the movie, there'd be almost no driving force. There'd be if it was just the police police friends, cop friends, trying to figure out <laughs> police friends. <laughs> police friends, police cops. If they were just by themselves just trying to go, what the hell? Who's killing the Jamaican voodoo posse? And the like he is actually a focal point. If the if he wasn't here, the movie would fall apart even more. I feel. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I actually like how he's a heel, but he's a heel that you know isn't fucking sneaky. You know, like he, you know, like you said, he has no problem getting in people's faces and laying down the the law. So you know, he's a cunt, but he's not that bad. Big Gary Busey. I. I I, I can't see his character. I just, like, get your teeth out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> I watched all of the DVD extras as well and prep for this, and he fucking stays in character. Like, he shoots promos in character about what his character believes. So, you know, thumbs up, mate. Method acting. Yeah. Meth <laughs> acting. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but for The Predator, the new movie, get ready for Peter Keyes' son, Jake Busey, because Gary Busey's son plays his son. Wow. Are you serious? Half the talent, twice the teeth. <laughs> and like, who else could you get, Lou? Who else could you adopt don't. this mouth? <laughs> so, you know, Peter Keyes, he's a capable guy. But he thinks the best way to trap the Predator is to try to emulate the Marine's insertion into SR-486 by outfitting all of his guys with body cams to hopefully capture the Predator in, in the movie's, like, penultimate scene in the meat factory, whatever. Because they, they figure out that the Predator loves to eat burgers or whatever. <laughs> Man, Aliens 2, this is not. Holy shit. It is, no. It feels more like RoboCop 3. Oh, God, RoboCop 3. I was going to say Nitro 2001. <laughs> yeah, I was like. say, that's a burial right there, isn't it? <laughs> the Predator just, like, it, it, it sets itself up to be like, oh, man, we have a real shot to to uh, fight the Predator because we know everything about his vision, about infrared, but it's like, oh, we, but we didn't figure that he'd have multiple vision cones or whatever, and he just, take, and he just takes them apart and... It, it's it's a weird thing because at that point, Danny Glover's character is the only one that's like left a lot or like left in the movie. Like he's our uh, protagonist and he's just left because because Peter Keyes is a heel. But it, it's weird because the movie has so many characters and so many things happening. There's there's King Wooly, the, the, the guy of the voodoo posse. There's Peter Keyes and like a couple of his FBI guys. And then there's the entire cop cop friends. In Predator 1, you felt like every character was kind of important. You felt every character kind of had something about them, but you don't get enough with every every character in this film because there's, there's it's just overloaded, I find. Kind of mixed bag in it. Um, what I felt about the cast is that they didn't 
play a big role in this movie and their deaths were just kind of pushing on uh mike's hatred and and (laughs) want to to like kill this guy you know but it's like he a lot of them have off-screen deaths too which is always shitty yeah what's the deal with that or uh Busey's character gets killed while hidden behind a fucking pillar. <laughs> I'm like, dude, cameraman, just move two feet to the left and we get to see it. And it makes no sense because the Predator throws his cool disc. One thing in Give Up a Predator 2, they're like, we need new weapons. They were awesome. We need lots right. of new weapons. Ah, Jesus. He was like, oh, get out the disc of saw. And he's like, what else is he? Oh, he has a javelin. Like, have you got any <laughs> sh- other shitty Olympic weapons. Like. Here's my shot put <laughs> and my hammer throw. My fucking curling broom. <laughs> okay, the net. The net is cool. It's only used once. Cyrex. But that net. Yes, yeah, Cyrex's net yeah. is used is used once, but a guy gets cut up, and that mean that's all the difference right there. But yeah, like the predator goes back to like ancient Greece. It's just like, what else can I use? Ah, uh, fucking throw a spear. <laughs> you have a laser gun. <laughs> Does he even use it? Just shoot the lasers nonstop. <laughs> just for show. Yeah, yeah, you're fucking right. Um, I I thought his discus saw thing was awesome, by the way. Uh, but then again, I'm a huge mark, so you know. But but Jay, you don't seem to like his weapons. I think he's a he's a fucking coward. This guy, you're killing Gary Busey <laughs> behind some meat, and like he in his this film, he's always fleeing. He like he's looking down from above and then pegs it. You coward! And like and he's a bit of a joke as well because like when the predator, he's uh, running away from uh, Danny Glover. He runs away. He, he, he runs away from fucking Murtaugh. <laughs> <laughs> like he he grabs the rainwater pipe and then he kind of falls backwards into an, an apartment. I thought they were gonna cut to him and his head's in the toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we were. Uh, that actually brought us on to what I thought was the worst scene in the movie by a mile with the like old fucking lady who like comes out of her bedroom and she's like knocking on the door and and then she goes in to put her ear against the door to like hear what's going on and then boom your man knocks down the wall and then runs through runs, yeah. boom that's a, all right bloody love I'm the juggernaut you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so you know that that for me like brought this entire movie down i hated that scene what about when danny glover was shooting at the predator and i was like pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> all those cowboys yeah. jumping off the fucking uh <laughs> balconies like i i have it written down the third act is an over-the-top farce with a chase of the pred like i don't buy this scene like I like Danny Glover as an actor. I think he's I think he's really fun, but I don't believe that Mike Harrigan, who has constant sweat armpits and like chest sweat in every scene. Like I know it's hot in Los Angeles, but the fact that he's keeping up with the Predator like kind of makes it into a farce at that at that point. Like it's not played super serious. It's kind of played for laughs and you start to like this Predator is more of a goof to me than than the first one mike's character is as you said he's a cop who plays by his own rules but like yeah. dutch is a highly trained black ops military leader you know like there's a gulf here uh and he shouldn't be able to you know, a kill or b take on but c chase off a much bigger, heavily armed space alien <laughs> killer. Uh, so, you know, this is just... Everything just kind of pisses me off. It irks me. <laughs> everything pisses me <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, and and the, idea that, the idea that Mike Harrigan can get a clean win... Oh, for the Predator. <laughs> it's like, he stabs him to death with his own disc, and it looks cool. Like, it's shot really well when he does it. He's like, the Predator's like, oh my god, this sucks so bad. <laughs> and he's, he's got it lodged in his chest, and like, that's cool, but it's like, I still don't believe that Mike Harrigan could do this. I could see, I could see Mike Harrigan, I could see Danny Glover's character being the chief of police 
who orders like a more crack team of of like super cops to take the predator down like like I don't I don't know who else like could have played Mike Harrigan but I just I just don't believe like he's like he's like a family guy he's like a family um cop that has like a lot to lose he's like the black guy that dies in McBain's arms <laughs> <laughs> and, and and when he kills when he kills the 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 city hunter predator and then He's like, oh wow, that was really rough. And then like twelve predators like v- like come into existence. They were just cloaked, just hanging around. This part I don't get. It's cool, but this part I don't get. Were there twelve predators that were just hanging around in the ship, waiting for the asshole predator to come back? What's the deal? Were they bringing this kind of you know young hunter down to earth to like? see if he's a good enough killer to join their ranks i guess or were they chasing him because he's rogue but that doesn't make sense because then there would be two ships yeah there's only one uh, maybe it was dinner time and they're like, you know, <laughs> it's rogue. but uh i you know i do like this final scene uh it's probably my my favorite scene of the whole movie uh it looks really cool and uh dudes what about that alien fucking skull oh whopper Ah, uh, is that one of the greatest teases uh, that, you know, wouldn't pay off for like 20 years or something like that, but uh, <laughs> what a tease, man. That sets it up where it's like, I'm, I'm trying to remember which one it was. It was like Dark Horse Comics wanted to make an alien and like, well, they wanted Alien Predator in the same comic. They wanted to publish it and they knew that a new Predator movie was being filmed and it was something like the the comic creators were like, oh, what do you what do you have coming up with with this new predator design? Like, what type of weapons, whatever? And they're like, oh, well, we also have this. And be- but because Twentieth Century Fox owns both franchises, and because the alien doesn't appear like in suit form, they're like, oh, we don't have to like consult anybody. We'll just slap this skull on the wall. And how awesome is that? And that gave, I think that might like it might have been reversed, but I think that actually gave the comic book. Makers like, oh shit, Alien vs. Predator, we even think of that. Because they had an Alien comic and they had a Predator comic, but they hadn't started Alien vs. Predator yet. So it's like Predator 2, with all its faults, at least, you know, could be partially like responsible for starting up that whole like feud, I guess. Yeah, like this, this single shot in a terrible movie sets <laughs> up the universe of avp and just you know give it give it off to more talented people and just let them run away with it you know they actually had uh an alien skull earlier in the film and they cut it out to make sure okay no you're just getting the tease at the end really and i think Uh, it's the right call yeah yeah totally but i didn't cop that until I saw AVP years later and went back and watched that movie. By the way, I've only ever, like, this was my third time to see this movie. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, third, because I watched it when it came out, watched it after AVP, and then watched it for this. I, I, by the way, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never watching this again. I'm also done. I watched it, like, a week or two ago, and I was just like, oh, man. Like, it's, it's actually not as bad as I remember it, but it's still... Like I'm just watching. I'm like, there's bits I like. Yeah. Like there, there there's there, there's there's a movie here, but it's it, it, they they just didn't execute it like super well. And when when the twelve predators came in, I'm like, oh man, look, they have different like masks, and I'm like, that's really awesome. And but the problem is, is that how do we get like a shitload of super tall guys to play all these predators? Well. We're filming in Los Angeles, so why not get the starting lineup of the Los Angeles Lakers to just come come in and put on these predator suits? No. Yeah. Really? There's a really there's an awesome outtake of all of them dancing, having like a dance off uh, while wearing all the predator suits. I think a decent kind of Harlem Globetrotters shit <laughs> within the predator suit. <laughs> Twirling like heads and all <laughs> do 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 <laughs> 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 skulls skulls just spinning on their fingertips successfully killed the franchise and like you know while predator 2 was co- commercially and critically like a failure it, it you know it, like it didn't have the same impact as the first film so like it wouldn't even become like a cult thing it's just like yeah that sequel like it's 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 fine 
But like uh, Steve said earlier, like it buried the franchise for like 20, like until 2004, because where we will not talk about AVP or AVP Requiem, because I am done with that. <laughs> I have watched, like I forget, I forget what review it is, but but Jay talks about I've seen episode one of Star Wars the most. Out of all of the Alien or Predator <laughs> movies, I've seen AVP 1 and AVP 2 the most. Oh, God. Because I try to think, how do you save this? How do you, how do you, like, I'm trying to, like, I, I watch it and try to go, uh, what could you, what could you have done? Where it, you, it's still the same components, mm-hmm. but how do you re-edit this? And it's like, if you combined AVP 1 and AVP 2, you combine the story of AVP one with the action and gore of AVP two, you might have something decent. Oof. I, you know, I think the first thing they'd have to do would be pull that bloody camera back, lad, so we can see the things Ugh. that we paid to fight actually fight. You know, I think that you can tell the film's going to be bad because they're like, oh, we don't really want you to watch the film, so we'll just turn down the brightness, just turn off the lights. Yeah, everyone just go to sleep. Another reason you can have you not watch the film is if we say it's from the director of, like, Resident Evil movies. Oh, wait, which ones? Oh, it's all of them. Fucking Paul Anderson, isn't it? I didn't know it was him. Yes, he directed Mortal Kombat 1. Oh, hold on, that's a classic now. Yes. Co- cult, it is. Cult classic. <laughs> <laughs> Only one letter out on that. Steve. Yeah, it's like <laughs> rain it back in a bit before I, you know, before we do damage to my reputation here. <laughs> I think he directed three Resident Evil movies, not not sequentially. Like, he directed Resident Evil 1. I want to say he directed Resident Evil Afterlife. And he directed the very last one. But, like, a couple of them he didn't do, I think. Which is the one with your man Wentworth Miller in it, the guy from Prison Break? Because that's... After... Af- Afterlife. Because because that's when I tapped out. No fucking way am I ever watching another one of these movies again. He plays Chris Redfield. <laughs> it's awful. <sighs> uh, this is actually my first time watching Predator 2 for this show. Um, Amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like when Greg says, oh, it's okay. It's like, holy shit. It, this must be terrible, you know? Um, written and direct, <laughs> written by the same lads, Jim and John Thomas. How the fuck did you mess this up so badly? And all these big name actors, Danny Glover, Gary Busey, Bill Paxson, even Borton Downey Jr. Oh, did fuck off back to Mania 5, mate. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, in terms of potential, this is one of the biggest flops ever. How could you mess this up? But, like, oh, my God, it's you can... You know the way you can't judge a book by its cover? Well, you can if you include the sleeve and the photos in the central spine, you know? <laughs> and you can tell the quality of a sequel by how many main actors come back for it. It's a big duck egg. <laughs> Don't say duck egg. It's a big duck egg. Um, although most of them are dead, but you didn't get Arnie, so there's no one there. But holy shit, the state of this, the cut of this fucking film. Predator 2 lost in New York. Like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, I would love that. If Kevin has enough prep time, I think that's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you just go all comedy on it. Ooh. What what is with all of the the jobber extras? You know, everyone's in gangland warfare in this film, and they're all like, "Hey, Brad Mang, hey, 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 shooting!" And whenever they get shot, it's the ice cube down the back selling. It. <laughs> Fuck it's sake! But did but did you like your man who like uh, he was the gangster with the long hair, and he runs into the room and just just throws his face in a big bag of coke and starts going. <laughs> okay. And a Scorpio is ready. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. And then when he gets killed and he falls off the roof, he lands on a Japanese table. It doesn't break <laughs> from a multi-story <laughs> fall. <laughs> Why the fuck do you need Jamaican voodoo? Is the predator in a city not enough? What the fuck? It's like a big bang of Blair Witch 2 off this. Oh, I've never seen Book it. of oh. Shadows. <laughs> Oh, fight. what a deep cut. Oh, man, the, the fight on the subway. Why do they keep um, cutting away from the fight scenes? I hate that fight on the subway because it's a cool idea. It could have been cool. Oh. They don't show the fight. Yeah. It's not quite trained to Busan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just also have to say, it's like, even though there were some decent actors in this movie, they 
they were bad. Um, like Paxton, I love Bill Paxton, but mate, I thought he phoned it. Like his his cheesy reading of all his lines, he had go away heat with with me in this movie. I I I, I absolutely hated him in this movie. Yeah, really. Yeah, B- because I thought I felt he was like one of the few highlights because everyone else doesn't really have much about them. Like uh, Mike Harrigan and his and two cop friends. They're just kind of like, yeah, hey, like, what's up? And then they don't really wind up doing much. And at least, like, it sucks that Bill Paxton doesn't even really get an on-screen death again. But like, at least he's at least he's trying to do so. At least he's trying to have a little bit of fun. I get what you're saying that he's like really corny, like he's dialing it up. He's dialing it up to a twelve, but it's not going to a zero. Like, like I get what you mean, but it's like he's he's just a highlight to me where I'm like. Someone is having fun with the material where everyone else is kind of playing it straight. Yeah, you know, looking at it from like that point of view, he is the one person who kind of had fun. But uh, I just, you know, I just thought it was cheesy. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong though. You're not wrong. I'm thinking like it's 106 minutes long. I thought there were four good things over, <laughs> which <laughs> comprise two minutes of the film. Um, you had the exposition in the van where Gary Busey's in that Good Burger jumpsuit. Um, oh man, uh, Danny Glover pumping shotgun shells into the Predator. That was very satisfying, I have to say. Um, seeing the trophy room with the alien at teased. Holy it. shit, I marked yeah. that. And seeing the Predator show up. So, oh, actually there is a fifth. Um, I thought it was very daring that at the end of the film, Danny Glover wears white face. <laughs> <laughs> I think it paid off though. As a kid, I was like, yeah, that's that's neat. But the like watching as an adult, I'm like that looks really weird. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know what to, how to feel about this because it's it's just it's just like dust, I guess, that's kicked up by the predator ship, which should have nuked him. By the way, when it lifted off, I I always felt that was weird. Absolutely, yes. There was a predator fridge that he just went into <laughs> a, a lead lined predator fridge. <laughs> Man, this film it's so sleazy. It's like this cheap. TV movie feel big bang of ITV off this film which is weird because the first time I saw it was on TV because my my parents are like Predator 2's on tonight on TV and I set my VCR to record it can you think back to how hyped you would have been to see this movie Predator fucking 2 oh my god it's gonna be a oh shit I was oh fuck what have you done to me it's like Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> Shut up! Because when I went, because when I went to go see Predator, uh, Predator Annihilation. When I went to go see Mortal Kombat <laughs> Annihilation, I was hyped beyond belief. Because like I just didn't, and my parents were like, "You can't go. You had a bad report card. We're not going to let you go to the fun thing you want to go to." I'm like, "No, Mortal Kombat Annihilation! Please, please, please!" They're like, "Fine, go." And I'm like, and I'm like, it's like. The first episode of Raw where I'm where I'm Bobby Heenan and I'm scratching to get out of the theater. <laughs> I was I was devastated. I hated it so much. But Predator 2 is Jay nailed it where I'm like, this has so much potential. Him being in Los Angeles in the concrete jungle. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's these night these these great actors. And it just I d it, it is it me, but it's like I don't know where the fault lies. Is it in the script? Is it in the directing? Is it in the story? I don't actually know, mm. but it just doesn't work. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I was going to say, stick me down for directing because they let the actors churn out some of these lines. I don't roll up for anybody, especially the fans, without a goddamn good explanation. And let it fly. Oh, that's Holly Burbick. Now remember for distance, you got to gently but firmly grip the club. He's on safari. Lions, the tigers, the bears. Oh my. The show move. Shit happens. You know, if it was me, I, I'd have been like, cut, no, do it again, do it properly. Uh, this movie, <laughs> yeah, this uh, movie is coming after one of the great action movies of, of all time. We have to make this good, and they just 
I get the feeling that they just shipped it out as fast as possible. Uh, and they were like, sure, it's Predator 2. We're going to make fucking bank. Who gives a fuck? And it's like, hey, people are not that stupid, mate. And It's, it's weird because the budget for this film is twice the original. But it looks like a quarter as expensive. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, Jamaican voodoo! (laughs) (sighs) I love how even one of the Jamaican voodoo posse is like, I don't believe in this shit. (laughs) I just have to do it because my boss told me. I'm just here for the ganja. So I'm going to paint this thing on your tummy and I'm going to cut you. And he's like, oh, voodoo magic. (laughs) I don't even know what the fuck this is. And like... I will say that one of my highlights of the film is that scene where they're they're killing that guy. There's the naked girl on the floor, and they string him upside down, and the predator comes in. Like, it's it's a short and effective scene, but I'm like, it it just looks cool. Like his little penthouse suite, and when they find all the bodies hung up, I'm like, that's cool. And that's like that's the last scene of the film where I'm like, okay, this is this is good, or I'm I'm into this. And very shortly after, I'm just like, eh, yeah. And then the final act is what what, what brings it. The final fight, rather, the chase and all the, the stuff with the old lady. Like, that's what really brings it down. It leaves a sour taste in your mouth. <laughs> the old lady. <laughs> like, whenever you say Predator and the old lady character, you know you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and they fucked up because... Until, you know, discounting uh, AVP and AVP2, it wasn't until 2010 where Predators comes into play. Robert Rodriguez, who of course is the famed director of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, (laughs) (laughs) he... I'm, I'm not sure if you guys heard of this because I only heard of it again a few years ago. He originally pitched a crazy Predator 3 script in the 90s Ooh. to 20th Century Fox. And the script was deemed as too expensive to film because he had multiple scenes uh, that, that happened on the Predator home world. And they were like, how, the f- what, how do we film this, idiot? And he's like, I don't know. I, I just filmed the script. I, I, I just I just wrote the script. And they're like, well, we're not going to do it. But in 2010, Robert Rodriguez is more of a name because he, he made all the Desperado films. Again, uh, Sin City, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and Spy Kids. <laughs> and they, they, they approached him. Yeah, because he was like, you know, it's a weird. Th- it's like it's like the Steven Spielberg thing of like, oh, I can't make, I can't keep making cool, gory movies. How are my kids gonna watch them? I know I'll make a bunch of Drek so that they can watch it, so that they're for spy kids. He was approached to kind of bring the Predator, the Predator franchise back, and he kind of, sort of, maybe did, because he didn't direct the film, but he did produce it, and his company. This company, Troublemaker Studios, who are known for being cheap bastards. Have you ever seen the film Once Upon a Time in Mexico? No. Ooh. No, no, no. This has Antonio Banderas. Mostly his hips and his crotch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Johnny Depp. And there's there's a scene on the extras of the DVD where it's this is just like, you know, a crime action movie in Mexico. And there's there's on the extras he shows a scene where he's like, oh, to save money, I didn't actually have Antonio Banderas shoot this gun. We just CG'd in the muzzle flash and the bullets coming out of the gun. So he's not even shooting blanks. Isn't that cool? And I'm watching this and I'm like, it's fucking not. <laughs> it's super lame. Surely that costs more because then you have to pay someone to actually. Maybe no, this. because the CG is shit, you see. Ah, I get you. <laughs> but to save money, he had this. And Antonio Banderas doesn't know when he's shooting the gun, so his arm never moves due to the recoil. So it looks like ass. And I'm like, no. that. But that's why 20th Century Fox hired him. Because, like, uh, oh, your, your production company does things really cheap nowadays. So they handled the technical side and behind the camera of Predators was the, 
unfortunately named Nimrod Antal, who sounds like a new generation jobber. (laughs) Or some kind of mid-90s album by a certain pop punk band. (laughs) (laughs) Or like an X-Men villain. Um, And he had a bunch of dull action thrillers under his belt at this point, but he was hired to direct Predators. And it's filmed in very obviously two different places, Hawaii and Texas. Um, Because I don't know about, I don't know if you guys tell, but when you see this movie, I feel Predator, like one, has a very consistent look. Yes. Even though it was filmed in like two kind of different places, like Mexico, and like they found a lusher jungle to film in. It just feels very consistent. But with this movie, from scene to scene, we are in a lush jungle. Then we're in pine trees. <laughs> then we're in like rocky, rocky crags. And I'm like, what the fuck? I get that it's supposed to be like an alien planet, but I also get that you're cheap and you f- <laughs> <laughs> and that you filmed in Texas and Hawaii. This this film, unlike Predator Two. Tell me how you guys feel, but I feel like it really tries to emulate the first movie and to various degrees of success. Uh, Yes, definitely. You know, uh, it definitely feels more like a Predator movie. Um, It it certainly looks better than than the second movie. Uh, It feels more like one. Uh, So, yeah, you know, um, right off the bat... uh, I don't hate this movie, you know? So, you know, thumbs up there. I really like certain bits of it. Other bits of it, you know, made me roll my eyes. But uh, overall, uh, definitely got the series back on track. It's weird because it did and it didn't. We'll get to that later in terms of its success, like critically and commercially. But uh, it, it it stars act notable action superstar Adrian Brody as... <laughs> As Royce, who's, I believe he's an American mercenary who is Operation Dumbo dropped uh, unceremoniously onto the surface of this strange planet. And there he finds like a bevy of other like soldiers and warriors who are all parachuted down like him. And they include Isabel, female sniper, a quiet but deadly member of the Yakuza, Danny Trejo. Uh, A big, cuddly Russian who just so happens to be carrying around Blaine's weapon, Old Painless. What are the chances? A vile escaped uh, con who may or may not be the cellmate of Nails. (laughs) Mombasa, a revolutionary fighter from Sierra Leone. And of course, Eric Foreman from that 70s show. (laughs) (laughs) Or, and also known as the guy who ruined my favorite comic book character, fucking Venom. (sighs) Oh, we'll get to that. Uh, (laughs) This is a motley crew. Like, however, will they get along with each other <laughs> to somehow make it off this crazy, crazy planet? I do. I do love that. It's like it's, this is Street Fighter levels of different background. It's like if you were going to book a Predator film, it's like, yeah, U.S. Special Forces, Israeli Defense Forces, San Quentin Death Row Inmate, Russian Special Forces, UFC Fighter and a fat Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously cartel yakuza and uh or uf fighter as well so fucking that's great what great booking it's it, it's it's a good fighting game roster you know it 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 is and but but it's like at the same time with with this many characters there's no time for any character development like whatsoever and we just go from spot to spot with the with the cast of street fighter you know, fighting a non-predator looking predator. You know, they get chased by dopey CGI dogs. And the movie, I don't know if you guys agree, but it tries to build suspense in between like certain scenes up until they reveal the predator or predators, which happens pretty late in the film, which is something that I think it's trying to do like the first like the first film does, mm. where it's like show the pre like don't even 
like don't even hint that there's something else going on for anyone new to the film like to the film franchise they try to set it up where it's like oh uh, what's going on we don't know i mean like if you know any of these movies you know exactly what's like going on almost or you can like surmise what's happening and it turns out that this planet is kind of like a hunting reserve where the Preds train on prey that they just dump in there from time to time, honing their skills, like trying to like, well, let's put these guys in and see see what we can learn from them. And that part of the movie is really cool. Like the setup is really cool. It's ah. a it's a good gimmick. A hunting preserve? What a fantastic setting for yeah. a predator. And when they first run into these new predators, like there's one that oh like he does not get his time to shine. He has the super underutilized cyborg falcon that that lands on his. Sh- but, oh, that's it. That's it. You saw him once, and you don't get to see cyborg. Like we're like, hold on, the budget is blown. We have <laughs> to drop this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just, it's the coolest thing, and oh, it does one thing, which is like look at people. And I'm like, what the, it could chop people's heads off or like peck your eyes out. I'm like, no. And then there's the dog lover of the group who, who's like the dog master extreme. And he has these tusks attached to his mask. The look of all the, all three of these predators is really cool. I feel like they're all individual. They all have like colors to them. Like one's green, one's kind of like yellow, one's like dark brown and red. And I think they do a good job where if we're going to have multiple predators, it's not like aliens, where it's like, no, we just have a million drones running around, and then there's the queen. They they do a good job trying to be like, okay, there's this one that does, that, that does this, this, and this, but I, maybe except for the final one, the one with the like cool jaw oh, attached awesome. to his, yeah, yeah. it looks so cool, And they, but the other two, I, I don't feel get enough to do, really. They're kind of, jobbed out fairly fast um which is probably my my biggest problem with this movie is uh this you know um ragtag group of people who you know who are all very very good at killing as the the plot tells us but uh they are not a team you know um and they're taking on this team of elite alien hunters and two of them they get jobbed out pretty quickly, um, which is a big shame. Yeah, it, it's my biggest annoyance of the film is that they have inconsistent strength. It's like they, you know, one of them clashed swords with the Yakuza and they're like evenly powered, but you can rip someone's spine and skull clean out. He's seven feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen two of these movies and we know that they're way more powerful than any human being with the exception of Arnie of course because you know he's a monster <laughs> of course. Um, uh, but yeah you know this like one guy w- with a sword uh, he kills him very very easily yeah one slice with a cat- katana blade he's dead but like another guy gets six grenades in the face and it oh I just got pushed back not a scratch yeah <laughs> yeah and like that 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 fight with the with the swords and like the swaying grass like really cool oh man this is gonna be such a good fight it's gorgeous oh, oh my god beautiful it, it is the coolest looking part it, it's like yeah like two strikes with a sword and it's it's just kind of over and you're like oh okay because okay, you were sort of setting this up to be awesome. And and it wasn't wasn't awesome. It was it was still cool. It was still a cool moment. But yeah, it's like it's like this film is filled with really cool setups for moments that don't always pay off. In fact, I would say like sixty percent of the time they don't maximize their their potential. They have all these run ins with the predators, and yeah, as as we kind of already stated, they run into uh, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, Morpheus himself, and he's busy. Hamming it up <laughs> physically, <laughs> and and somehow this man has evaded predators for years on this planet, and and he's gone a little mental because of it, and even more explicably than that, he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seasons, he's been scavenging off the land and hiding. There's no animals that they ever show, except for the predator dogs. They don't show a single. Like what? Is, what? What is it? Is there McDonald's? That is he getting Uber Eats? What's happening? And like uh, th- this, I don't know about you guys, but this bother like this one fact that that 
like Lawrence Fishburne, great actor. But why did you why did you cast an older actor who has a very visible dad body when when it's the role of a crazy, desperate, isolated jungle hobo who's been on the run for years on a foreign planet that has no food? He should be a a dying skinny wreck skeleton um adrian brody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey and you know also um morpheus says that he's killed two maybe even three of these things by himself like you know that in a way is also burying these monsters yeah you don't bring <laughs> up the humans you bring down the predators yeah. to make it an even fight I, the only thing I could say is that, like, maybe the Predators are, like, yeah, really young and experienced, but they don't – but but because we don't have any sort of, like, insight into what the Predators are actually doing, like, how old they are, like, what rank they – how much XP they have, you know, like, we, do, we, we don't get that insight on them. So, yeah, you're right. It, 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 it doesn't bring up the humans. It just makes the Predators look weak, which is, which is a big shame because – the ones that are in here already kind of look weak. Like we just said, this Yakuza fight, he's dead in two hits or whatever. What they could have done, which would have been pretty decent booking, was uh, maybe he's just lying through his fucking teeth. and <laughs> yeah. He's crazy. And it turns out that he waits until people land and he kills them. You know, like that would have been cool. But, you know, he, but they didn't do it. Th- that's kind of what they sort of set up where he smokes them out when he invites them into his like little, into his like little like space apartment or whatever. Like, space and, apartment. And he, and he, and he, <laughs> he just, he just smokes them out with something and he's like, yeah, I got, this is how, I think he might even say a line like, I need to, uh, like scrounge off your bodies and take whatever I can get to, to survive. And I'm like, that's cool. Uh, were any of the people you killed before, did they have tons of fast food in their packs? And like, is that how like you are the state that you're Beat in? Cake. I, I don't. Maybe it's like Castlevania. You just started whipping things and like a big ham hock comes Meat. in. Nice. <laughs> and, and leading into that, we kind of have um, a climatic showdown between the last three human survivors. Notable action movie star and fan of Triple H's nose, Adrian Brody. Adrian Beaky. <laughs> fucking our lovely uh sniper isabel and of course venom from spider-man oh, 3. fuck off spider-man 3 <laughs> royce royce takes center stage he's the main event here and squares off with i i think he's called the berserker predator yeah in in a scene that it's actually one of the stronger scenes to me where it kind of cleverly apes the battle between Arnold and and the Predator of the first film where he's like, kill me, come on, kill me. And I'm like, if you kept it at that, if it didn't have all the other setup and the mini gun that Blaine has, if you just kept the homages or like just stealing from Predator One, if they just kept that line, I'll be like, that that's fucking awesome. It's it's yeah. it's more potent that way. But you've already diluted the movie with quite a few like homages to the first one and i'm like eh, i would have preferred that by itself but it's 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 a nice play on how he sort of uh scrambles uh this new predator's like vision with with putting a bunch of fire everywhere i'm like that's actually really cool and it's it's a scene where it, it i didn't expect it you know no it's true uh, but but did you like how how uh, adrian brody's character suddenly turned into the flash and he was able to meow, hit him, meow, hit him. And he just kept on doing it. And I'm like, how is he doing this? Jesus Christ, maybe, he's turned meta-human. Maybe, maybe in uh, Lawrence Fishburne's uh, space apartment, he found like a fucking Pegasus boots. Nice. Oh, was like, <laughs> just yeah. able to go really fast. Sam is a speed booster. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But oh no, someone in the group is not who they seem. Uh. Uh, in one of the most telegraph spots ever, because when all of these criminals and soldiers and are like, why are you here? I'm a soldier. Why are you here? I'm a vile criminal. Why are you here? I don't know. I'm a doctor. And I'm like, yeah, I, want, I wonder if you're actually just a doctor, though. Eric Brock Foreman. <laughs> 
<laughs> reveals that he was a sneaky serial killer all along. Please, someone entertain this. Why would the Predators ever choose him? He doesn't actually say, like, I- I'm with the Predators. He just says, oh, I like this world. I like hanging around them. What the fuck is that? This scene was written by Vince Russo. There's no <laughs> other reason why this made this movie. It makes no sense. Uh, it's bollocks. It brings the entire movie down, if you ask me. Like, it just... Wh- why? Wh- why? It's stupid. Like, it, it, it doesn't need this extra complication because, because as soon as this is revealed that Eric Foreman, Brock's character is just, like, a serial killer. Oh, that's a whole different... T- like, he just gets owned as soon as, as soon as it's revealed. Like, it doesn't... It actually would have been more effective if it was revealed earlier in the film. To me, like, like I, I'd rather it not be there at all. But but the fact that he, he says it right there and then it's instantly forgotten and he's just, he's just out of the movie, I'm like, oh, okay, that was a whole lot of nothing. It's weird, like, at the start of the film, he sees the poisonous plant, and it's like, oh, one scratch causes total paralysis. Sorry, doctor by day, botanist by night. (laughs) (laughs) On an alien planet! (laughs) What the fuck? Yeah. I wish they never said anything, because Beaky knows about it straight away. He doesn't fit in. I say, oh, but that, you know, I'll see you in an hour. Um, Or, how about if he killed one of the characters earlier, and then said... He doesn't! Predator killed it. And, and like then the movie sets up a side plot where he obviously wants to to kill the girl and you know that puts everything over and that you know that would be still not good but it would be better than what we're given yeah if he was some kind of predator concierge you know that he he actually <laughs> keeps a boy <laughs> <laughs> like he keeps the preserve running yeah you know? yeah there's a good idea somewhere in there where like one member of the group like uh, you know is is not what it seems but the way they just reveal it and 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 the actor like I I've seen I've seen this guy god I even forget his real name Toby Toby Topher Grace to, to, yeah Topher Grace Topher Grace I've seen him in like one or two other things I saw him in a horror movie recently where he was quite good and like it's it's just here though it, it just doesn't work he he does have like one or two one liners that I, I I chuckled at what film was this uh god I'm trying to remember what it was called it came out like this year but it he's like he plays someone that's like mentally unstable and he inherits god. a house that's haunted yeah 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 I, I forget the name of it but he he's he's very good in that and like he works there but he just he just doesn't work here because all I can see is the man that ruined like <laughs> spider-man 3. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, oh it's, it's my rough. god he should just start doing a a start dancing <laughs> oh god so you know his 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 sort of like character arc i guess is quickly solved uh the predators are defeated and royce and isabella share a moment they look up at the sky to see a sequel trying really hard to set itself up which never actually happens it was quite painful watching that last couple of seconds where like they're like oh we're gonna try and get off this planet see you in predators <laughs> next month <laughs> see you next month at predator fast lane <laughs> <laughs> like the sequel never happens and there's farty pyro and then we're out for the for, for predators <laughs> like it, it's really okay. All right, this this movie, this Predators, was made for how much? What was the budget? Forty million. Forty million. How much did it bring in? Thirty nine million. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred and twenty seven million. Really? That's good. Why does this not get a sequel? It, I, I no idea. R- Robert Rodriguez was never like never mentioned the franchise again. Like forty million dollars is incredibly cheap for a movie like that. That looks like this. Like it looks great. It yeah, this doesn't look like a movie that was made with forty million dollars. It, it it really doesn't. Like I, I'd say like maybe a like maybe like a hundred million even. But like even that is cheap by today's standards. Where like you know a superhero movie is made for like two hundred million, and I I just I just never understood why they why they didn't go forward with another one if it, like 127 million worldwide like uh, th- that might not be counting 
like what they spent on marketing, but it's it's still so strange. Um, just overall, you know, I say like I like this movie. It's fine. There's nothing awful in it. There's nothing that makes me angry. That that makes me want to get on the net and start typing in caps. You know, except for fat Morpheus, <laughs> he's fine. But it doesn't build anything. You know, like it doesn't add add much to the kind of myth of these, you know, awesome fucking space aliens. Other than kind of saying now that there are actually two types of them, you know, and uh, it's probably my favourite line where the guy says, uh, think of it like, you know, wolves versus dogs. And uh, I was like, this is good. Let's delve more into this, please. And it just and doesn't. Do. It just doesn't do it at all. And then they go back to their movie where they have a fight, and Topher Grace turns heel, and then he's absolutely smashed out of it fifteen seconds later. And then they set up a sequel that never came. So, but like overall, decent movie. Don't hate it. Don't love it. Uh, wouldn't recommend it, but wouldn't wouldn't tell someone to not watch it either yeah I, I feel the same way like I thought although it's a sequel it really is just a remake of Predator 1 and um, it's the same structure of having the Street Fighter cast that are dropped off in the jungle and they're picked off one by one and there's a bit of jump in the water hey, a bit of mud and it leads to a big singles showdown <laughs> with Predator and Beaky I have to say one thing is I wish everyone in the film was a roidy beef like I love the hunting preserve and I love that the Predators it's- set up a trap the Danny Trejo trap and seeing the kind of HD Predator vision and you get the old score that comes out, that was pretty awesome. But just exact same score. This film fell off a cliff with Fat Morpheus. Holy shit. Like, I just, I don't care, you know. And although we do have the... It's fat asses. <laughs> like, he ruins it and they have a big shot looking at his face. And I was like, holy shit, man. I, you know, I laughed when I saw him. Holy shit. He's like, I'm alive and hungry. <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> Um, but, uh, man, so the first half of this film, really enjoyed it. So, you know, there is a lot of good to have in this film. Yeah. Poor Yak as a guy. It's like every, like fucking Oleg, the, what's his face? Taktorov. Nick- oh, Nikolai's his name. Yeah, yeah, the MMA guy. By the way, he beat Tank Abbott. Yes, he did. UFC 6. He was a... Which isn't hard to do, to be fair. He was a good L fucking fighter. 17 wins out of 24 fights. Yeah, not bad. Know. Um, I felt bad for the Yakuza guy because, you know, everyone has, you know, he is old painless and everyone's got rifles. He's got a pop gun. He's the second worst equipped guy in the movie. Besides, after the guy with no gun. Like, it's a silencer, I think. And it's 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 like, oh, Marge, look at that little little short Yakuza guy. He hasn't done anything yet. And you <laughs> know it's going to be good. <laughs> <sighs> and in all fairness he does get probably the coolest scene in the entire movie yeah. it just doesn't go on for long enough you know give me give me 90 seconds not 20 seconds you know that's what she said oh i agree i agree with pretty much like i'm i'm happy most that we're so of that. most <laughs> of it <laughs> I, I'm I'm very happy that we're on like pretty much the same page because when I when I saw this initially like in the theaters I was like oh that was really awesome because I wasn't I wasn't expecting it to be very good and it w- I wasn't very good but I was still pleasantly surprised and a- anytime I watch it thereafter like I it gets a little bit worse each time but yeah it's 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 never bad but like like I've always said I'd rather you be like you know, an eight or uh, an, an eight to a 10 or a zero to a three. I, I'm not a fan of like movies that are like fives or sixes. And I'd say like, if I could like throw a number on this, I'd, it's it's like a six or a seven. It's like, it's so much better than Predator 2. And I think it's biggest missed opportunity is something that Steve said. It's like, they mentioned that there's two different types of predators. Like there's a dog and there's a wolf and there's like a civil war going on between like the classic predator that you find that you see in the movie and then like the new breed and i'm like that's really cool but it's never followed upon not in this movie and not the sequel that was never filmed so (laughs) it's 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 just kind of like again wasted potential a little bit yeah absolutely agree but fortunately eight years later in september of this year uh the fourth film the predator was released and was written and directed by Hawkins himself, 
from Predator 1. Uh, but this time, the hunt has evolved. Disclaimer. The film The Predator is still in theaters. Thus, footage of the movie is not readily available online. Scenes that Matt, Jay, and Steve discussed during this review will be represented using similar scenes from different films. So, the fourth and latest film in the franchise is dubbed The Predator, a naming convention um, I don't particularly like in this instance because um, not only does it make little sense wordplay-wise following Predators, the movie also features multiple Predators. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the fuck? It's directed by Mr. Black, uh, Shane Black, <laughs> and, and his writing partner Frank Drecker. Uh, and the last film they both worked on was 1987's The Monster Squad. Have you guys heard of this film? I fucking love that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like an absolute childhood favorite. It is. It needs more pop-up skeletons. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's the seminal kids fuck around with the supernatural, like sort of mold that like, you know, stranger things kind of is, I mean, it's a much goofier film cause it features all the universal studios monsters. And funnily enough, at Stan Winston Studios, artists worked on makeup and costumes for both the original Predator and the Monster Squad in 1987 at the same time, like in the same warehouse. They're working on everything. And they were all really stoked to be making new versions of the Wolfman and Dracula and the Mummy. And they all thought Monster Squad was going to be like this massive E.T. styled hit. And they all dismiss the Predator as that shit project that that would never take off. So whenever an artist was assigned to work on the Predator suit, they would audibly groan. Oh my hmm. god! Like, ima- like imagine those guys. Just the- you can see when their hearts rip in half when the box office comes out and <laughs> and, 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 and Monster Squad just didn't. <laughs> like it's a it's a fun movie, but like it it, it never went anywhere after that. Um. Uh, Hawkins from the first movie is now directing a Predator film, and his previous work, uh, directorial work, was uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, uh, which is an amazing film. Iron Man Three, which is you know pretty pretty solid. It's it's funny, and the Nice Guys um, that has Ryan Gosling and um, and the Gladiator, God uh, Russell Crowe, and it also has the biggest budget of any franchise in Predator history, clocking. Somewhere near like eighty, eighty-eight million dollars. And wow, it has you, a God. You'd yeah. never guess. You you wouldn't because they it looks hired, like, they, like the DC guys that do the CGI. <laughs> <laughs> um, it also has a really notable cast with names like Thomas Jane, Olivia Munn, and of course Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> Jay, how could this movie possibly go wrong? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just just as like a basic rundown, um, the movie starts out to me very strong. Two Predator ships are chasing each other and one is damaged and crash lands on Earth. It just starts with two ships battling in space. So I'm like, yeah, it's because you never see the ships that much in the Predator movie. So it feels weird to start off with like an intergalactic battle to me. Um, so like you, you buy two tickets for the Predator and then you, only, you walk into the theater. What, Solo? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you seen Solo? No. no. I have not seen Solo either, but there's it's one... It's the movie no one wanted. No, nobody. But someone told me about one little thing that's just mentioned in Solo where I marked out really, really hard. They, ca- I care about the part where apparently someone goes, oh, they used to practice that ancient fighting style, the Masters of Terras Kasai. <gasps> yes they mentioned nice. that game nice which That's very cool which if rumor has it should come out on the ps1 mini <laughs> could you imagine it <laughs> oh i want it so bad <laughs> now after this uh this this battle we cut to a jungle where a main character quinn mckenna which is a name that i think is written to be way too cool like old rustler names from like the ruthless aggression era. A sn- he's a sniper in the U.S. military, and uh, his op is interrupted by the Predator's ship crashing. He's tossed aside during the explosion, steals a bunch of the Predator's shit, and has it shipped back to his home in. Help me here. Is it Maryland 
or Georgia? What state does the movie even take place in? I was never really sure. Maryland, yeah. Maryland, was Maryland? Yeah. I swear I, I remember someone saying Georgia, but... The Predator crash landing is also being monitored by a secret government group known as Project Stargazer. Conveniently, the Predator itself is also captured and just shipped to one of those two previous, like, I guess we've now said Maryland, he gets shipped there. Um, And they're probably going to start poking it with various forms of science to find out what the Predators are all about. (laughs) Poking Um, it with science. (laughs) Right away, Matt, uh, I just thought that this, like, they jobbed out a predator in the opening of a movie called the predator like just right away this guy's a geek K- kayfabe though he was in a crash maybe he's weak maybe maybe maybe, maybe he's got a concussion i but you are <laughs> you are right in the sense that it's like it's just a story contrivance to be like how could we possibly capture a predator when like 15 guys in predator 2 with uh snowblowers couldn't kill him or capture yeah. him, you know, and they just they just sort of grab him. Do they? I don't even remember now. Do they even show the process of how they captured the predator? No, they just put <laughs> to him on some <laughs> ringy ding table. Yeah, that pretty was much. It. Here's, uh, here's a pair of handcuffs. That's grand. Like, and I take it that he's that he's just lying there like a jobber for <laughs> hours. He sells for nine sells. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell in a <the> cell. <laughs> He does get trapped under there, but they never show uh, all these geeky scientists, like, how they, they captured him. So, yeah, they cut to the next scene of him, like, on a table. Hey, no, we captured him. Want to fight about it? Um, <laughs> very, very quickly, because this movie does not give you a chance to breathe at all, is that during all of this, the government, knowing that our sniper uh, sniper friend saw the Predator ship, basically disavow him, label him crazy with a fake psych eval, and smush him together with a bunch of other soldiers who are all suffering from various forms of PTSD, and they're all characterized with the subtlety of, like, a nuclear bomb. Um, (laughs) We we meet all of them very, very quickly, and of course, during this scene, we also find out that uh, Sniper Guy's son signs for the package of the dangerous alien equipment that arrives at his doorstep, and there's like this vague explanation of how the mail got mixed up and was sent to his home rather than his P.O. box. Do you remember this? Oh, he's like, he didn't pay his fees for his P.O. box, so <laughs> yeah. they shipped it to his house. So they just... Uh, so, take, which is more convenient. They just take the extra cost of sending it further for no fee. Uh Okay, sure, uh, yeah. why not? This child is supposed to be brilliant, by the way. Opening doors to strangers. But this, to me, is like the real first crack in the movie script where I'm like, okay, they want to get this alien equipment in the kid's hands. Of course, he's not going to send this dangerous equipment to his house. So it's like, yeah, he's a cheap fuck, so he didn't pay his fees. <laughs> so that's our, that's our main character, everybody. And it's it's also just a convenience for his son to use the awesome galaxy-conquering power of autism. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like someone's never been in contact with anyone on the spectrum. At yeah, all. it's so offensive. Oh, it's the next step in evolution. Evolution. Get the fuck out. Hey, me. Jay, it's a mystery. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> but I, you know what's weird? It's like, but this is how the '80s would have done it. Only I can read these secret passwords from Mortal Kombat <laughs> Three and understand what they mean. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, this means that he, of course, can understand complex alien technology in a language no one can possibly understand. And just to, like, really blast through this, meanwhile, at Project Stargazer, they invite super ultra soldier mega scientist Olivia Munn onto the project because one time she wrote a lovely letter to the president or NASA or whatever. Uh, that she likes aliens, making her the perfect random person to gain entry into the most secret place in the world. Um, uh, this pissed me off. She's what, yeah. 30 something young woman, and she's the brightest, most foremost biologist and evolutionary scientist. Now, R- Richard Dawkins is still going, you know? Yeah. Stephen Jay Gould is around. He might have a better grasp on things, having but, done it for longer than she's been alive. <laughs> no. In the, movies, in the movie's canon, if she's the smartest, how come she's not there to begin with? Why do we have to have a stupid reason for her to be there it, like at the start? It's because it's, it's, Stargazer yeah, are heels and she's a face, right? 
I thought it was just like they want to pick her up in the park to show her that she's friendly with dogs. Oh, I'm walking my dog, <laughs> me and dogs, you know. <laughs> You can't hate me. She gains entry to it. And despite the predator being heavily sedated, he just wakes up, of course. Um, And this is where one of the, uh, to me, like one of the better scenes of the movie happens. Badass action scene of the predator waking up. He wants his shit back. uh, Just starts tearing things up. And for some reason, while they don't really explain it, Project Stargazer has other predator helmets from movies that we haven't seen yet. I, I don't know. Like they have like the classic one from the first movie. Was that left over from the first movie? Oh, um, he, he does say that there's, um, you know, the predators came around in 87 and 97 and recently it's been getting more frequent. So maybe I'm like, that is something that was said, but I have a massive issue with that. Right. What's 87, that? 97. That's a gap of 10 years. 2018. <laughs> that's a gap of 21 years. It's been happening more often. <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> it, literally, it's been halved. <laughs> you stupid fuck. Wait, what happened in 2004? Nothing <laughs> happened. Everyone had tea. Uh, like, could you not have thought a better way to write this? Because the Predator grabs this old Predator helmet and then watches the VOD upload of the Twitch broadcast that the kid put out on, on his helmet that he has. And then, then the, the Predator is like, I'm going to go there because he saw the kid's address. Uh, sniper friend and crew bust out of their bus. They meet up with the escaping winter soldier, Olivia Munn, <laughs> and a fatal four way <laughs> ensues for the rest of the movie. McKenna's Marauders, the Stargazer Scientists, the Penultimate Predator, and the Ultimate Predator. Oh, man, um, he hogans the shit out of this film. And that's that's basically what it comes down to for the rest of the film. It's like all four groups just, just kind of bumbling into each other, just everyone not knowing what's going on, everyone just kind of going from one scene to the next. And that's, that's kind of basically it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I have a list of things to give out about, but uh, I want to know, <laughs> I want to know from that point on is what, what things did you guys like? What things did you not like? It's like the original Predator had joke, straight up jokes. Like one of the, one of the, was it Shane Black? Yeah. His character yeah. just tells straight up jokes. So they have this here as well. <laughs> and, uh, like the Predator, he kills everyone in the back of a uh, army van and is like oh is everyone all right in there and he gets the severed hand and puts it in a thumbs up and puts it through the hole it's like that that's funny it also means you're a bit of a joke but, uh, yeah, know, that's, the pr- for the predator to do yeah that. yeah you does know the for predator like the, know that's a joke that's exactly what i was thinking how does he get human fucking humor he's he's been here for like three days most <laughs> of it on a table on like just out cold see they had raw on in the background ah! <laughs> he picked it all up. Um, I also, in, in terms of like funniness, I really like the line that they had in one of the trailers, and it's here. It's still really funny. Yeah, like, that's, that's so that was funny. Yeah, it was a great. That's a very modern uh, film to have to start mm-hmm. insulting and picking flaws out of your earlier films. It's, it's very modern uh, filmmaking. It's very meta. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Tom Jane with his Tourette's for comic relief? Uh that horribly, horribly miscast. That guy is a badass. Every time I see him in any movie, even if he's playing a bad guy, like he's always cool. And, and like now he's just this, now he's just this joke. And and like it's never really funny him particularly. There, some other guys get some good lines here and there, but I I just kind of felt he was annoying. Do you remember uh, you're talking about ruthless aggression era? It's like you remember Goldust in <laughs> around Evolution and Goldust got rare, shot. Rare, rare, rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, this Tom guy was like, the freaking Punisher. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And he's a joke. With in Kevin this. Nash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Nash dressed up like something from a Jean Paul Gaultier show. You know, with the little sailor stripes. It's all coming back to 2003. The re- the reason why I call Olivia Munn a super mega soldier is because she's this really smart scientist. Cool. That's fine. How come she knows how to shoot every single gun that they give her? <laughs> What's that about? It came She's a out commando. of nowhere, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, she was running around using grenade launchers, lads. <laughs> All scientists are trained in the deadly arts. <laughs> She's a biologist. Like, at least give me a line where it's like, oh yeah, I trained for like three years with like heavy arms or whatever. Somewhere, give me something. You know, even 
something as simple as one line say that, you know, oh, I went out with a guy, he's a soldier, he showed me how to shoot guns, or yeah. or my, like, parents had a farm in the middle of nowhere, my dad used to take anything me hunting every, every month or so. You know, just, like, literally one sentence in there just to get over that this, this lady... Uh, knows how to shoot guns but mm-hmm. it, it, like it just comes out of nowhere because i'm not the biggest olivia munn fan she played a horrible psylocke in that last x-men movie <laughs> um i really like the scene where she she gets knocked out because she shoots herself in the foot with the tranquilizer <laughs> yeah that was really funny that. and your man is like here i'll catch you fall down and then it, <laughs> oh. he leaves her and oh sorry about that that's that great. was a good laugh yeah. that yeah. was that like a lot of, I will say that not all of it, but a lot of the humor works in this. And it's like, I didn't even mind it. Some people are like, oh, it's too jokey. I'm like, all of the Predator movies are pretty jokey. I think yeah. Predators is the most serious one. But yeah. even Predator 2 is, is kind of almost a comedy. I was going into this movie terrified that they were going to ruin this with, with jokes and comedy. And then coming out of the movie, I'm like, when I think back on it, my favorite part of the movie is probably the, the like, banter back and forth and the comedy with with the lads. So, mm. uh, yeah, you know, I have to say, well done there. Uh, but that also means that the reason that I went to see the movie, which is for action and murder and blood, uh, <laughs> that's the side that let me down. Yeah, it, it let me down a little bit too. I'm not exactly sure why, because there was lots of blood and violence. Like, I don't know about you, but very early on when the Predator busts out of um, uh, on the table and then he takes a machine gun and starts yeah, shooting yeah. guys, I freaked out. That's so cool. And I <laughs> like I was because I wasn't expecting it. I wouldn't even know if the Predator knew how to shoot it. But like maybe he has been studying Earth somehow or knows that Predator have like a Wikipedia. Like after a little while, whenever the Predator did something to anybody with a weapon, it moves so fast. And it, like, again, it has no room to breathe. Like sometimes you don't even know what's happening, like with how he's killing people, because there's a lot more CG in this. Uh, mm-hmm. The ultimate predator is all CG, which I felt looked actually. That, pr- that's pretty good. Yeah. What most of it was good. There was one or two yeah. scenes where it looked so fa- like like jarringly fake. Like it is yeah. cartoon violence. Yeah, the, like the CGI deaths, like getting speared in the dick, and another guy gets like stabbed a lot of times in your one's house, and mm-hmm. it's like completely fake. And it it I'm sure this is why you want, uh, this is a 16s film, yeah? So it's why you didn't want an O rating, but it, wow, it really hurts the film. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I, I get what they're like, we want something that's like 10 feet tall, like that's how big it is. And we don't feet. really, <laughs> we, we, we can't get giant Gonzalez to get into the suit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I assume giant Gonzalez is dead. He oh, is, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like the, we don't have a performer that's that's tall enough. So maybe, maybe they thought. Oh we're my just god! Him. The predator goes around and starts chopping, chopping <laughs> things, <laughs> crushing heads with his vice. Oh, that would Can be great. Barely though. walk. <laughs> Book it. Book it. <laughs> um, in terms of something that was CG and wasn't funny, and I think I really hated the most is the fucking predator dogs. When they initially show up and they have a fight with them, I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then it just keeps showing up. It just jar jars the movie <laughs> for me over and over. I'm like, this thing isn't funny. Like it, you're, it's turning into a joke. And how, <laughs> why is it a joke? Because they shot it in the head in a certain way. And now it's scared of them. I was never a hundred percent clear why that one predator dog just suddenly becomes like a, a comedy jobber. Olivia Munn does. She has a, like a half a sentence about it. And People are trying to shuffle her away, and she says, "Oh, they got their sensory set receptors or something like that." And that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Ridiculous. Ten more scenes with comedy dog. Um, yeah. So you know, I was fine with the first scene where the dog gets shot, and then it walks off, and you know, it you know, like the dog is walking like it's drunk. And I'm like, ha ha ha, yeah, great. But then, like you said, <laughs> it comes back. It fucking Jar Jar's the movie. Miss, I want that my Oscar, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, go away. What did you think about it, Jay? Oh, I enjoyed the dogs. They just, but they, they Roman Reigns, the, these, oh my the God. The big dog. <laughs> the big <laughs> dog. <laughs> did you like that its dreads? A, the whole thing is ridiculous, but that's especially, like, is this some kind of, you know, 
people turn into their pets. <laughs> <laughs> the predator well, dogs sorry, and what? predators look nothing like them. That's exactly what yeah. I was just going to mention. They were cool okay. looking with the tusks. That never happened. Uh, oh, obviously, no. it was on another world as well. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. So like they could have possibly mm. known. Oh, I was just going to give out. I had the same problem with <laughs> AVP, but like this film is shot in the dark. Even when they're in someone's kitchen and they're having a chat, it's it's all muted and turned. I know that's trying to be scary, or whatever. But when you can't see anything, it's just annoying. There's just like a contrast and brightness problem. Mm. Um, I, I I get what you mean. It's pretty dark, but it's not like. Unfil- unwatchable dark like alien versus predator 2 is all in the dark all the time and it's shot like shit like you cannot see and i, I think like studio execs would oh you could see so much in it but yeah like anyone would have to break. like the more you change camera angles the more times that you have to reprocess the image yeah and the kind of more distance you get with it and that's the problem with this you know kind of anything beyond predator actually no just only the first Predator and Predators in 2010, is that you're dropped in a jungle and it's very intimate. You versus the Predators, you're up shit creek. And this one, it's like in suburbia in America and there's the government. So you could just jump in a trash can and that's the end of the film, you know? (laughs) So that's, there's no intimacy there. So, uh, you know, the stakes are lower than the pressure is lower than. I agree with most of that. No, I agree with all of it. Um, <laughs> because that, that leads me into like one of the main points that I think I read in a lot of reviews, and I, I think you, you'd agree as well, is that uh, I haven't seen a film since like Suicide Squad where I'm like, holy shit, did they fuck this up in the editing bay? Like, There's so many scenes where I'm like, wait, wait, where, where'd you come from? What what happened to you? I don't I didn't know where you were before, but now you're here. Oh wait, we're over here now. Okay, cool. It just comes off as very disjointed, especially in like the third or final act. I, I was just like, what's going on? Even when they try to have an intimate scene where the ultimate predator, <laughs> ultimate warrior predator, <laughs> is just is just I want to hunt you all now because we need to have some predator one right now, um, and I'm gonna hunt you in this forest. It moves so fast one of the main bad guys just dies and i don't know how they how it happened yeah he's, oh, which he's just gone the like black guy with the laser the shoulder cannon <gasps> oh it was weird olivia Munn said hey what's going on and he had a shoulder thing and it shot him in the head like i think the predators might have broader shoulders and it's i wouldn't smack <laughs> them in the head but he was like friendly fire if that makes any okay. sense okay what wow. a great way to have your main villain get killed. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. As what a, a jobber. And that's actually another massive issue that I had with this movie is that the tone, it's all over yeah. the place. It's like bits of it are comedy and then next is action, then sci-fi, and then they're trying to do horror and then it's back to comedy. And I'm like, what? And, and like then it's family drama. I'm like, oh, what is going on? Listen, Pick one, maybe two, and it's base your the, movie It's because the that. dog keeps appearing, <laughs> and he keeps wrecking the scenes when the scenes are like, <sighs> oh, it's kind of serious. The dog just shuffles her. Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> like, only one film can juggle eight different tones at the same time, and that's Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Thumbs up, George Lucas. There's even more cut out of this movie. I'm not sure if you guys uh, like heard about this, but Edward James Olmos, who, who was in Battlestar Galactica- Battlestar had complete scenes filmed of a completely other character that wasn't in the film. He played an evil general. Wow. And they just cut him out mm. of the movie. Really? That's- Edward James almost. More like <laughs> yeah. a- <laughs> uh, who, who I will have you know is best known for his role in the worst season of Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, spoilers if anyone doesn't want to know about, like, the the big sort of last second stinger that this movie has. But it's like, hey, guess what? Uh, the main character, uh, Olivia Munn and the kid, they all survive. So they then show a stinger scene that I'm like, what are you going for here? But it hypes it so much where I'm like, oh, what's going to happen is like the sniper guy um, now suddenly works for the American government, despite like him knowing the most secret shit in the world. And he's yeah, now like a hit on him. Like- yeah. They promote him now, I, I guess. Uh, Olivia Munn's working there. And now his son, who is like 
10 now works for the government as well because of autism. Best of luck having a normal life. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the army? So they find some piece of predator tech that that the movie didn't mention for most of its running time. Like, oh, that predator, the very first one, he's a, he's a nice guy. And he wanted to, us to be able to fight the invasion of predators, which is something that's going to happen. And that's something nobody, no fans want. I don't want to see an intergalactic war between predators and humans. That's that's not why I want to see these movies, you know. And they have this big lead up. Oh, something's going to come out of a pod. Some human shape is going to come out of a oh pod. Oh, God. This was originally in the script going to be Arnold coming out of it because they dub it the Predator Killer. Yes. And then when the script was brought to Arnold, he's like, no, thanks. I don't. And like then I, the people in charge are, we need Murta. <laughs> <laughs> No, he doesn't want to do it either. Then we need Adrian Brody. No, no, he doesn't want to do it either. (laughs) But Arnold was like, and I kind of feel two ways about this. I'm like, come on, dude. It's a fun cameo. But he was like, if my character was in in the movie a little bit more, if I got a little bit more to do, I'd come out and do it. I don't want to be the main character like or anything, but if I had a role in it, I, I would do it, but I, I don't really want to be in there for like a two second cameo. And they said, fine. Um, so then they just have the most awkward, weird, confusing thing I've ever seen where it's some black goo from Prometheus. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, oh, they're going alien. And that worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's an it's just, it's an Iron Man suit comes out, and I think it's like taking over someone's possessing a scientist's body. But it's a weird Iron Man suit that looks ridiculous. It looks like an action figure from like the mid nineties, and it's just one suit of armor, and it's just a predator suit of armor, and it's got shoulder cannons, and like this will turn the tide in the war, the war that only had one side. Okay. But but this is their this is their plan B or their plan F, I guess. Uh I hated this. Like this left such a sour taste in my mouth. I don't want this. I don't want I don't want this movie to be a success now if this is what you want to do in the future. If this is the route you want to take, I want you to fail. Like what do you guys think about it? Oh, it, it was terrible. Oh, I was so sad when I was like, because I was prepped for Arnie. I was like, so oh, was it's got to be amazing. Because he did the cameo in that Terminator film and I marked out hard to it, you know. And I was prepared for it. it's going to be a shit CG looking one. But this is just, it's like Survivor Series 1990 when the, with the egg, you know. <laughs> What's going to be in there, you know, with the Cougar Undertaker? comes out of the <laughs> Won't this movie have been better if it was the gobbledygooker? If played by Hector Guerrero, yeah. <laughs> And they put the song on. And he's like, Viva la raza! <laughs> that would have made it. Uh, no, well, no, it was off. What a... T- oh, get out. Get out. Um, I like, you know, okay, they're doing the Infinity Wars thing with, um, you know, he's got an Iron Man kind of nanotech suit. That makes sense. Yeah. It's mobile, but it's just fuck off. You know? I'm just sick of like, stop trying to build universes. Stop trying to set up sequels before this movie happens. Make your movie... Make it good, and then if it makes enough money, then you can hire. Then you know you're about to say real actors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then you can get in uh, people to actually pen a decent sequel and get it to tie in. You don't need to put the carrot, you know, and dangle it there. And like, I don't want it. No one wants it. Your movie was shit. End it now, please. Steve, you know? I wanted three Aragon films. <laughs> <laughs> and now I got it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Filled that world. Yeah, I was I was furious at, at this ending. I'm like, this is bollocks. Give me an ending to your movie. And I'm just like, N- no, why would you think this is a good idea? I know Arnold didn't want to do it, but like almost anything would have been better to me. Because you don't want to see a fair fight with the Predators and humans. Us being not the top of the food chain is what makes Predator interesting. That's the whole gimmick. We have to overcome it using our bra yeah. and also some brains. No one is going to pick up on this. And the movie made $24 million in North Ooh. America over the weekend. Which Ouch. is in line with what Predators did. 
10 okay. years ago. It made like 25 million and it hasn't released in China and a couple of more countries. And at 80 ish million dollars, I think that might even be discounting marketing. Like, I don't know if it'll make a profit and like, I hope it doesn't <laughs> just, just because I don't want to see a sequel to this, but I still want predator movies or something to continue. <clears throat> so I feel like two ways about it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. What if the sequel is uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. New Suit lands on the Predator's ali- uh, alien homeworld and teams up with Adrian Brody? That sounds absolute awful. bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I won't. See that. Yeah, I, I, I don't want any more of these. Um, Can I? I'm, I, I like. I'm just sick of being let down. Mm. Um, but I, I like the I, I like the main Predator in this film. He had a cool new like armor set. He seemed to like really know a lot of shit. Um, and I, I like I wanted to see more of him. I, I thought the Ultimate Predator, while it's cool in on paper, like he wasn't that great. Like he's naked most of the time. He's just getting his ass out there. He's like the Tommy Wiseau of the Predators. <laughs> um, I- like the upgrade predator i do like how they had the slow reveal of him because you know the kid gets the massive um mask and it's like way too big for a normal predator yeah that that was cool but i just thought in general it kind of sucks that now like a predator isn't enough just the normal predator yeah i was thinking like that you need they execs feel that you need a super predator because i was thinking you know because we always talk about wrestling it's like you know if you have a pay-per-view you could book a match that has a table match and that's fine you can book a very interesting match um, and lots of drama around the table match. But like, what if we say, no, we can't do tables. People are bored. Let's do a flaming thumbtack table. You know, and that's what the super predator is. Yeah. You know, it's a hat yeah. on a hat, a gimmick on a gimmick. You know, yeah. not mm. needed. Better writing is, would be better. Yeah. You know, yeah. just the film I wasn't mean, very good, but the idea is good. Yeah, the, the, the core concept of this whole thing, it's like soldiers that are kind of damaged or whatever. I kind of like that. And I, I kind of thought, like going into it i'm like oh the movie's just gonna be about th- that that like dysfunctional group of guys trying to like fight a fight a predator and then it was just it wasn't really that it was it was just like this crazy like a uh, uh, quest that just goes from point a to point b to point c really really fast with predators thrown in uh two of them uh, like a little kid and there's all this stuff it's like and there's the stuff they cut out i, I if there's a bunch of added scenes or like a different cut on blu-ray i'd give this another watch then just to see if it would change my mind um so the whole production of this seemed to be fucked from the beginning like just a lot of trouble in it but they had um, reshoots for the the final act as well which they kind of downplayed they're like oh no we just had to film like some extra shots whatever and it's like i read various reports that say like no they 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 filmed quite a lot they they redid uh, a good amount maybe someone's wig fell off or something <laughs> like Sarah whatever, man but. they should have fucking filmed uh the predator dying did you see like there's one shot where the predator's like eh, but it's 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 got like you know two frames a second to stretch it out yeah it's, yeah it's like you I, forgot to, like that, that was okay with um the term the terminator you know they had one last shot yeah. of the dying terminator but in this one it just looks so ropey yeah holy shit did you like the this movie faking us all out with the like um ultimate guy going i want mac kenna he is the only true yeah. soldier here and so you know it's it's the the movie is basically setting you all up it's like this is going to lead up to a big boss battle with the u.s soldier versus the ultimate alien killer and then it's like a a kid (laughs) fuck you you know what i love about this film is like at the end of it it's like okay here's the main event it's in a quarry and there's a bit of a spaceship going or whatever and they have the army guy and he gets the car batteries up to the fence and it's like oh my god an electrified steel cage where's the dudleys (laughs) 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 Devon! <laughs> <laughs> Russo, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. But, you know, uh, honestly, I, I, you know, I was really disappointed. I wouldn't say the movie is no. even, like, it's not terrible or anything. There's certainly some fun you can have with it, especially if you leave your brain at the door and don't, and don't think about it and don't make a review. I'll, I'll definitely give it another watch if it comes on Blu-ray with some extra stuff, but... Uh, 
I, there, there's not much to say beyond that for me. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I think we've got gotten it all out. Uh, I don't know if I if I like this more or less than Predator Two. Um, I'd probably say more, but you know, overall, I I I went in with expectations pretty low, just based on the history of how these movies have gone. Mm-hmm. And even with going in thinking this is not going to be good, I came out thinking this was bad. So you know. Um, I absolutely couldn't recommend anyone going to see this movie. Uh, I'll tell you to uh, <laughs> wait for it to come out on Torrent <laughs> <laughs> and save yourself a couple of quid. I th- like it. I was gonna say it's a one and done film, but I paid twice to watch this. Oh. <laughs> um, like I've seen it, enjoyed my time. Zero desire to ever see it again. But but like mm-hmm. the whole gimmick of the Predator is awesome. Um, of a superior alien race that is better than us and we, we have to be wily and use our wits to overcome it. That's awesome. Like, I enjoyed the different setup. Um, the Predator running around the suburbs, high school, and the baseball field. Having a ragtag army group who are, you know, uh, lots of different personalities. That's always cool. And I enjoyed Olivia Munn as well. Yeah, um, who, yeah. I, but in general, like, I won't lie, I will watch any Predator film that comes out. It's a cool scenario. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You do AVP3, I will watch it. <laughs> I yeah, was I'm there. just about to bring up that very same point. I was like, okay, we all didn't like this movie, but I think it's fair to say that we'll all still pay to see the next one that, that they bring out because we're marks and we're suckers. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I I super agree. It's like even in, even in AVP3, it's like, yeah, you go, oh, fine. And you just, you sulk into the theater. <laughs> you sit down and you just endure whatever you're seeing, you know, so. And you anger um, eat your fucking popcorn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want to say thank you so much to Jay and Steve uh, for sitting on with me on this this Predator retrospective and, and review of all the films. This this has been like an absolute thrill for me to do. So uh, I want to thank you guys again. And please take your time to plug your shit. Uh, yeah, uh, I just, uh, of course, uh, come uh, see us on OSW Review on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can follow me. I am the one underscore OSW. And I regularly play games on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash OSW review. Come Many watch me and have games. a bit of crack. Many great games, <laughs> indeed. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> man, we, I can't believe we stunk up Matt's show for this. <laughs> there you go. We promised nothing and delivered less. Yeah, so it's a goodbye from V1. Take care of you. <laughs> and Matt. I don't have a thing. And myself, Jay Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and remember... Oh, winner, oh, winner, is, winner you. is you. Get that in the edit. There you go. Yeah. I just stole you your go. show. This is not my show. The score to the first film, it's it's a bit there's a bit of John Williams in there too. I absolutely because a bit I don't remember you. 